And we're live. <laughs> no, I changed my mind. <laughs> well, too late. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, okay, cool. So we're not doing an introduction this week. Um, stop me if there's a technical problem and I can restart. We're not doing an introduction this week. Um, actually, for the purposes of this, I believe, yeah, you guys were about in that cluster, but Jacoby, I'm going to move you because you were unconscious right there. Don't get, don't worry, I'm going to give you guys a second. I'm going to give you a chance to move around in just a middle, in just a minute. So um, the direction, the top of the uh, battle mat, that is in the direction that just off this mat, that's where all the monks are into the entrance of in their temple. Remember, we're still in the middle of the Hall of Justice. Um, and the very edge of the top, the middle top of the battle mat is where the stairs came down that you just saw Master Faradir walk down the stairs. Um, long, thick black robes and all, all of the monks beside her, one fist to the side, one fist on the ground, bowing in front of her, walking down. So then um, about at like where four o'clock would be, just off the mat, uh, sitting up on a seat, would is Kolmak, uh, Lieutenant Tuvian, and Lieutenant. Um, it's too loud. And Lieutenant Amos all sitting there. Kolmak just like laughed and laughed and laughed, like um, loving exactly what he just thought it was hilarious that you guys just easily handled um, five disciples of the um, five disciples. Um, of Master Faradir. He's laughing, and suddenly you see uh, Mas uh, Master Faradir. You, again, she is a... She's in a maybe middle-aged elf, but of course with elves it's hard to tell. Very tall for an elf, like over six feet tall. A really still body as one leg moves out in front of the other. Her sh hair is very red and cropped incredibly short. Very large blue eyes. Walking down, looking at you all. That was impressive. But I wanted to see what you could actually do. Not just with the use of trickery, but with your brawn. And then she removes the, the larger robe she wears, the ceremonial robe, and there's an, a simple black tunic underneath, um, uh, just like all, all the other disciples in, in her temple. And she moves her hands upwards. And the, the blue light that's all surrounding you from the huge ceiling that's letting in sunlight but in a different color glows on her hands. And suddenly, Olwe, you wake up and the light picks you up and stands you on your feet. And the... Um, sorry, I'm messing with stuff. And all of you feel a surge of energy go inside of you as your hit point max goes back to maximum and you regain any abilities and spells that you previously would have had. And you feel the strange ripple of almost like a, a wave and almost like a flicker of blue fire moves across the moves across um, the floor. Did somebody just say wait? Nope. Did, okay, never mind. And she, she looks at all of you and says, now, show me what you can do. Go ahead and roll initiative. Can can Zerp say something? Um, let, let's let's get initiative done, and then okay. and then you then you can. Terrible roll. Natural twenty on my initiative. Well wow. done. Well done. Well. I rolled a two, or no, a one. So completely opposite of you. I got a thirteen. So a uh, four. It was fate. Jacoby, do you get anything to your initiative? Sorry, what? Oh, I was asking Jacoby if he gets anything to that four. Um. Oh, my bad. It's uh, six total. Six total for Olwe. Okay. Um, Zerp, what's your total? 24. And Alathar? Uh, three. Oh, are, you, are you putting it in there? Some of us are. Yeah, they're on the chat. Nice. Okay. 
Or all of us are, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Raiden got a... A D&D Beyond import is pretty cool looking. Yeah. I like it. I finished the most recent episode. Just earlier. Oh today. really? Yeah. I'm still having troubles getting into it. Really? I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think I'm like five or six in, but I'm still just like meh. Yeah, it took about that much for me. I think it was by the sixth one I was like, okay, I'm in. This eighth one got me unexpectedly choked up briefly. <laughs> what 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 are we talking about? Critical role. Uh, okay. All right. Um sure, Zerp as a free action. Um, as a free action, you can go ahead and say something. I'll say, stay back. Leave her to me. <laughs> I would like, I'd like everybody to roll, um, roll an inside check. Natural 20. Ooh. Dang, son. Out here showing off. Um, what's your total then? Total 22. Still a 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, with that, you all, uh, if you are looking at her face as Zerp says that, she does turn her head and look directly at Zerp, but you can't really discern actually any change in her expression. All right, so top of the order. Zerp, you wanted to go? You're first. All right. Uh, let's see. Can I move? 45? Straight at her. Nice. All right, roll for attack. And and this is the first time you see Zerp not walking super strange, not running super strangely. He, like, Naruto runs with his, like, two and a half feet height, just... <laughs> so you put his nice. arms behind him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, swings away. Uh, 21? 21 that to hits. hit. Uh, I think it'll do the damage twice, but we'll just take the first one if that's okay. I tested it earlier. Sure. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. First one. So the seven? Yeah. That should be right. So that's three plus four. Yeah. All right. So where do you hit her? Uh, right in the gut, like a spear, like with my quarterstaff, spear her in the gut. Um, and as you hit her, uh... cool. Um, you hit her, and she does like give a little bit in her stomach. But she can, does not stop maintaining eye contact with you as she does that. And just um, leans in. And you just smack her. You can see her. She has to take the blow a little bit. Second attack, right? We're doing that now because mm -hmm. we're level five. Yes. Oh, you get a second attack. You sure do. Uh, probably not. <laughs> so 11 probably misses, I'm sure. It does miss. Wait, so you swing again. And she just, uh, you try to go across, but to hit, hit her in the in the head, and she just ducks way down. Oh, ah, Rex. Yeah? I forgot because I'm new to level five. With that first hit, I'd I want to dump a key point into Stunning Strike. All right, go ahead. DC 14, con. And she has to roll Wisdom. Wisdom? No, no she right. rolls con. Oh, yeah, 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 con. DC 14. Okay. Let's see. Yep. 
and she's going to get it. Okay. At a total of 19. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so then I missed my second attack, and then I'm going to uh, dump another key point to do flurry. So first attack, second attack. That's your total? 16 and 19. Yeah, the, those. Uh, you come back in with the staff, and she dog. She she just dodges to the left, and then like actually moves closer to you as you try to stab back in at her, and both of those miss. The sixteen and the nineteen both miss. Yes. All right, and then I have fifteen more feet of movement. Um. So I'm just gonna, and I and I don't provoke either, uh, with my drunken style. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm gonna kind of sway a bit back and just step back a little bit and uh, assume a ready pose. All right. Um, um, okay, now next would be her turn. And she's going <laughs> to, as she, you hit her once and um, you tried to do a stunning strike and she just looked into your eyes and you hit a couple more times. She stops breaking eye contact with you and she starts to move down. One. Yeah. Is going to move to Rasheel. Um, yeah, I'm just going to roll. She's going to make a attack on Rasheel. Uh, first attack, 15. Uh, miss. Miss, okay. And she's going to come back in for another attack. Uh, for 18. Hits. Okay, and she is going to uh, spend a key point to use Stunning Strike on you. So roll a Constitution saving throw. Ooh. 19. 19. Yep. You actually make it. Yeah. Very what's good. My, what's my damage on that? I'm going to roll that right now. Uh, that is damage 12. And she is going to, as she winds up, take another two attacks on you. First one will be for a 30. The next one will be for a 28. So those both hit, right? Yep. Okay. And then she's going to, for those two. So total both those, she did another 24. Day, sorry. Damage. I'm down. 24. I All right. Drop to the ground. Okay. So I gotta. Sorry, there's a lot to keep up with for, with her. Okay. What was the she first? Moved... Hold on. Um, what was the first damage? First damage was 12. The next one was 24. Okay. You down? Yeah, I, was, I just wanted to make sure that the second hit wasn't just a, a, a hit on my death save. Oh, you okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she, didn't hit, she didn't hit you that hard. It was, it was, it was big, but not that bad. Six. Um. And then she's going to use the rest of her movement to kind of run over you in this direction. So, uh, Iguan, you're next. All right. So, hmm. I basically got nothing new helpful. This wait, where did my third level spells go? Give me a moment. Eight. And the app does this. There we 
go. That should be correct. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Because I just saw someone get beat up in one turn. Be the bear. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll run in as a bear. Or something. Tiger. Yeah. Be a tank. Yeah, I'm going to run in as Ulob. So I'll become a large sized bear. And then nice. I'm going to run up. Can't actually change my size here. But I'd be taking up this square, this square. I can change you. Square as well. Big ol' Iguan. There, there you go. go. And Big then one. I'm just going to claw. Uh, sorry, bite first and then claw. All right. Roll for attack. I'm assuming a 13 does not hit. Nope. All right. And then my claws. And that's even lower, so that does not hit. Okay, so uh, do you want to do anything else on your turn? Nope. Because I <sighs> took a movement action, and I attack. I don't have bonus action. So yeah, that's my turn. All right, next is Olwe. Okay. I am going to move. Each of these is 10 feet, right? Five. Oh, that's even better. Hold on one second. Oh, how did that happen? I'm measuring. Oh, you're measuring? Mm -hmm. That is amazing right there. All right. Well, from where I am. How do you do the measuring feature again? There's a little ruler with a circle around it and the and the things up on the upper yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Sick. If you grab that and then you just drag it, gives you the distance. Nice. All right. So I'm trying to see exactly. Um, All right, well, right off the cuff, I think I want to hit her with a Chaos Bolt. All right. So, chaos Bolt, you um, roll for that attack? Yeah. The so roll first, and then for damage. Oh, my gosh. Mm. <laughs> Assuming that doesn't hit. No, it does not. I was just double checking that you roll for that. So yes, you do make a spell attack. All right, so you fire off a chaos bolt, and it just um, she moved so quickly, she kind of caught you off guard, and you also are like a little bit of like, well, where am I? Because you don't really, you were sort of shaken as you just were glowing blue and stood something stood you back up. So you shot high, and it hit a column above her, mm. uh, b beyond in, in the chamber. Where am I? Do you want to move anywhere? Uh, I think I am happily far away from her. <laughs> um, I can attack twice though, right? Um, for no, you could have one action. So casting a spell would be just the one action you have. Some some classes, like a monk, at a certain level, they get two attacks, but okay. not not at where you are with sorcerer. Okay. If anyone, if, if I say something incorrect about the sword, I think I know sorcerer class doesn't get more than one action or one more, more than one attack. Well, ever, right. Well, sort of. <laughs> Quick and I mean, not not a, not as a base class feature the way like a monk or a fighter does. No, you can twin your spells if you took twinned, but I know he didn't twin, so. Yeah. But if you had taken that, you could have twinned to chaos bolt and slammed two chaos bolts in. Yeah, well, and I neglected, I keep forgetting to hit the advanced dice roller. Um, that was an 11 and not a 5. Okay, Does that so change le it? 11 plus what? Oh, 11 total? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't change it. 
figured it wouldn't, but I just keep forgetting to. It's all right. You've, you've never been lost. on this, this site before, have you? Nope. Never seen well, any of this. I mean, I've been on this site. I still don't know what I'm doing, so you're <laughs> you're fine. I thought I did. I got here today, and I was like, this is easy. Wrong. <laughs> Um, okay, that means we are up to Alathar. All right, point of order. Are we in the same competition that we were in before where we're not allowed to cure anymore? Oh, um... Uh, no one has said either way. Okay. Then he's going to... When he sees Rashil go down, he's going to shout, Rashil! And he will run over to him around this side, avoiding her, and cast Cure Wounds. So seven hit points back to Rashil. And in addition, as a bonus action, I will also cast Healing Word for another five points to him. Brotherly love. And precisely. <laughs> and that'll be it. Brother, wake up. So 12 points to you, Braden. Cool. Thank you. Very, very kind of you. So that puts us back to the top of the order, sir. <clears throat> hey. Not so fast. Boom, just enough speed. <laughs> Um, let's see. First attack, gonna sweep the legs. Not really like a trip attack, because I don't want to do a trip attack, but just for flavor. Okay, you come down with, at a 17, and she gracefully just kind of steps over both and it misses. Um, oh wait, do I get advantage? Flanking? Oh, because of parlay. Yeah, um, because of flanking. Yeah. Let me try again. Uh, again, yeah, that would be yeah, a so little bit close. better, but not good enough. All right, so uh, we'll just we'll see if she could do it twice. I'm gonna go for the knees again with advantage. Okay, yeah, you hit her right in the knee with your staff. Yeah, this this time I judged her jump and I just kind of clipped her as she was going up. Uh oh, there we go. Six. Six damage. All right. That's not giving me my full damage. I just realized. Not that it probably matters. Uh, it rolled a two, but it's supposed to add. Oh no, that's the full damage. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yep, we're yeah, good. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, so she can go ahead and roll another con save. Oh, natural 20. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. Um, and then, so I'm going to gonna headbutt her right in the gut. I don't know. Uh, and whack her with my tail, with my flurry. Mm -hmm. So first one with advantage. Hey, that oh. was a 24 and the 11. Yeah, you... That, you uh... The first attack, you headbutt her right in the gut. And again, it gives a little bit, and she maintains her stance. For five damage. Five damage. Minimum damage. Uh, and she can make another save. And I'm out of key points. All right. Give me a second. I don't want you guys to think I'm a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> You see me taking a picture right now? Uh-huh. It's in the text thread. I just rolled a night I've just rolled a nineteen after rolling a twenty. <laughs> Dang. That uh, was like I mean that's the right move to make with your keep. Yeah. Probably. Uh all right. So then that was with my headbutt and then my um tail attack. 18, 14, no, that misses. All right. Um, I'll you come at her with like, several blows. You hit her hard in the knee and head, head, head butter 
right in the right in the stomach and they both land and she just she she, she like bends a little bit obviously like feeling the impact but like comes right back comes right back into her stance okay and her facial expression still oddly placid <laughs> you said placid yes okay you said you, you thought i said something else flaccid yeah, <laughs> yeah i thought okay placid <laughs> calm and peaceful in a creepy way it's a creepy way that's it for me okay then she's gonna go and um she is gonna provoke an opportunity attack from all three of you to move here darn it now i wish i had another uh what's it called do we still have advantage at that time i think that's uh, how it works yeah sweet jeff you're um two spaces away does that provoke an opportunity attack Don't believe so. But... Uh, uh, I can't hear anyone. I can hear you, Noah. Uh, Jeff, I no, can't I hear, you. hear you. Talking. Hey, Jeff, does it provoke an opportunity attack? Oh, no, not... no, you're fine. I was thinking. Okay. I was... Uh, does well, a... it's confusing because I moved I to you. Um. So, Eric, um. And you guys are getting advantage on this because you had you were um, flanking Eric. Those miss, and Rasheel, uh, you get another one in it uh, after that. Do I? Well, with flanking, I would assume so. Uh, I was I was kind of catty from Zerb or from uh, what's his face. Can you say that again? I couldn't hear it. Somebody else talked. Sorry, I was like catty corner. I wasn't completely right across from. Um, uh, oh, so you wouldn't get it. Love. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, it would have to be directly across. Yeah. Although he is big, it's still. Yeah. OK. Um, and Noah, you're the only one who lands a hit. Sweet. So go ahead and roll damage. Damage. Oh, come on. Twelve damage. What would you use your claw? Yeah. Twenty-three. You slash down at her claw and rip into rip into her back as she turns away from you. Um, but she, she has the opportunist ability, so since she got attacked, she gets to respond with an attack as she turns around. She's just um, as she's running past you, Rasheel is with her full fist going to hit you right into the temple. For a, she got a sixteen. Miss. All right. So then she is going to, um, attack Alathar. Ooh. Only for a fourteen. Uh, I will cast shield as reaction, and that will make her miss. Okay. And then she's going to. Attack you again. Ha <laughs> Wow. So low. For a 15. And that stays up. So the shield stays up so your AC is pretty high, right? Yeah, I'm a 17 right now. Okay. Um, well, then she, she is, as the shield is like block, is like pushing her back. She's, gonna, she's trying to like go around it. And she's going to, again, she glows blue. And she's going to try to attack again for a 26. Yeah, that'll hit. And then another attack for a twenty-three. Sure. Seeing what you seeing what you've done, she pushes through on both of those. Um, for I'll add up the damage. So the damage is sixteen. Um, she did max damage on one, mid damage on the other. So then averaged out nicely. Um, and she's going to, as she hits you for that last one, she's just hitting you really, her fingers outstretched. And actually, like, just the tips of her fingers hit you right in the chest. And roll a constitution save. Oh, great. Let's see. Oh, 
funny. You did it. Nice. You got it. You have a plus six to constitution? Yes, sir. Sorcerer. Nice. How does that work? We get our proficiency modifier to it. That's our, oh, one that's, of our oh, saving I, throws. I forgot you guys were proficient. Cool. Yeah, very nice. All that's right. Out. And that ends her turn. And Iguan, it's your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to move closer because I don't have reach on my attack. And I'm going to attack with a bite. All right. Does a 19 hit? It does not. All right. And then I attack with the claws. That does not hit, given it's 15. Oh, yeah, it does not hit. Okay, do you want to move anywhere else? I'm going to move up here. And that's going to be my turn. Okay, and then we move on to Rasheel. We'll fire another arrow. I'm, I'm expecting that I am... Oh, that would have been a problem. Um, she tried to hit me. She should have gotten advantage because I am prone. Oh, yeah, you never stood up on your turn. Right. I didn't have a turn yet. Oh, good point. So let me go back and see. She, yeah, that only just that one hit the rest were against Alathar. Um, would a 19 hit you? Yep. Okay, for her damage. Uh, she doesn't get you. Ten damage. Okay. <laughs> Are you sitting at two now? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I will fire uh, an arrow at her. Uh, I get advantage. And I can re-wall one of them because I have Elven Accuracy. <laughs> well, let's give this a shot. Triple advantage. Yeah. Um, I'll just re-roll this one. Does a 22 hit? Sure does. Okay. Good. Then that is... 15 damage. 15 oh. damage. 15 damage. It's with my sneak attack. Oh, oh yeah, with sneak attack. Very nice. Okay. And, and then, for my bonus action, I will get the hell out of there. So I'll run 35 feet south. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. So that would just, it wouldn't really be your bonus action because you could just use your movement, correct? Well, I need to, I need to disengage so I don't, um, provoke. okay. Yeah. Well, then disengage would be your bonus action. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then the oh, movement. Right. Bonus action, disengage, and I use my movement to move. Right. Okay. Okay. I was like, I think you can do that. I just think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Because I was thinking dash and disengage were the same thing, and they're, they're not. So. Yep. Cool. All good. Is that your turn? Yep. Um, nice. So that's for Shield's turn. Olway, your turn. Woot. Um, let's see. I'm, uh, I'm looking at a couple of the uh, spells that I have here. Okay, I'm going to um, move, well, it doesn't matter if I move uh, and then attack, right? Um, no, yeah, the, the order you do those things in is not important. You actually can break it up even. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to inch a bit closer here. And um, I am actually uh, 
I'm going to cast um, Chaos Bolt again. Now, you don't have clear line of sight of her. I think you'd have oh, because I... you're yeah being directly blocked by Iguan. You think you'd have to move so you have clear clear line of sight. Okay, so I've moved. I think I moved 15 feet, or was that 20? You, you, you can go back to where you originally were and, and start then go over up. Again. All right. If, if you want to go diagonally from the start, if that ends up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll do that. Cool. I'll give it to you there. Well, <laughs> all right. I think that's fair. All right. And I. Just double checking all of my little stats here. I, I forgot to create a character on uh, on here on the on the internet. So now I'm just like looking up all of the things on my phone here. Mm-hmm. All right. So chaos bolt. And I'm going to do an advanced dice roll. And I'm pretty sure this is it here. Pretty sure that's it. Oh my gosh, how does that even happen? Okay. Oh, well, oh dude, that's rough. You fire off another it's, chaos bolt, and uh, it, this time it goes low and just smashes into the ground about there. There it is. All right. Um, I don't think I can do anything else useful. Yeah, I think that's your turn. Man, the dice aren't nice to you right now. I'm going to use my for real dice. I don't like this digital. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's the computer. All right. Been doing all, right. To work. all right. I am going to go ahead and cast mirror image upon myself. So suddenly there are uh, three Alathars uh, moving around the same space. Nice. And that will mean that uh, when the master attacks i roll a d20 on a six or higher he'll hit one of my images first and then it came changes to an eight and then an 11 for the the other two duplicates as they get destroyed anytime one's hits destroyed so uh, yeah that's my first point of order and then as a bonus action um i will cast healing word on um rashiel so he will get another seven hit points back. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Is that your, is that your turn? You're welcome, brother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, Zerp, you're up. Zerp's gonna get his quarter staff in lay in a like a baseball bat grip. Uh huh. Getting that kind of stance lined up, and then. Full 360 as he moves, 360 spin <laughs> as he moves into this space to kind of just whack her right in the ass. Right, sorry, right in the butt. <laughs> I'm a <Beauty>. jump. <laughs> so you don't hit me. <laughs> oh, where'd it go? There it is. Nice, it hits. Roll for damage. Ka-chow. Minimum damage, five. All right, five. Damage. All right. All right. Uh, sorry. Attacking again? Yep. Um, that seemed to work. I'm going to spank her again. <laughs> nope. Where's my second one? It just went in there. Oh, for advantage. Do, do, do. Oh, for, yeah, for advantage. Do, do, do. Press it again. Oh, wow. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Harsh. 
Nope, not on the second one. Do you want to move Mine's anywhere else? Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll use my bonus action unarmed strike to um kick her in the shin. Yep. <laughs> For nine damage. Getting better damage with my unarmed strikes than my quarterstaff. <laughs> D4 rolls better than D8. Nice. Anything else? That's it. All right. Then it comes back to her turn. And she sees what Alathar just did. And she's going to try to jump and, like, flat heel kick him right, into, right in the chest. For... You have shield up, so that shouldn't work, right? Well, no, shield only lasts for a round, but I am going to go ahead and do it again. So that will okay. that will miss. All right, and she'll use her second attack, natural 20. Well, yeah, that'll hit. Let's see. That kills one of my duplicates. Okay. So she's not rolling damage on that. And then she glows blue again, and then attacks again. Um, it was another 15, so that does not... I'll just type it in for... Miss. And then the next one is it meets your AC. And the last attack is a 17. And that'll take out another duplicate. Okay. And there's one more duplicate left at this point? One left. I need 11 or higher. Okay. Um, and, the, and then as she finishes that, she's going to spin and go down into a defensive stance. Mm. Give me just a second. I want to record that. Cool. And then I got to... Her turns are complicated. Um... <laughs> All right. And that means it is Iguan's turn. Are you going to just dig in with claws and teeth and see what's going on? All right. And first. she's in the de defensive sh stance she's in. She's kind of looking back and forth between both of you. Um, and she used the dodge um, action as a bonus action last round. And so th that that negates the advantage you would have. Sweet. Oh, natural 20. That hits. Roll damage. Double damage. Nineteen damage. Nice. And then I dig in with my claws. Nope. Doesn't hit. Even without a defensive stance. Okay. And that's my turn. All right. As Iguan Rashiel, you're up. Pull out another arrow and fire it at her. I do not get advantage on this. Ooh, nice. All right, that arrow goes straight at her, and I'm. She's gonna see. She's is, is moving constantly. Is gonna try to catch it out of the air. Um. Eight. You, I mean, you, you, you have to know what the damage is first, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's by the damage, not by the attack roll. Yeah, so go ahead, roll damage. You don't crit okay. on a 19, Braden? With that bow? No. Oh, darn. That's no. a crossbow, right? I think so. Oh. So nice. 17 damage. So yep. she spins around and catches that arrow and just breaks it in half and lets go of it. Okay. So no damage. No damage. All right. Um, as my bonus action, I'm going to uh, use my second wind feat, or class feat feature, and get a d10 plus one health point. Nice. Nice. Good rolls. Cool. Amazing. All right. Give some of those good rolls to, to Ole and to... Yeah. Big one. Come on, guys. Carol. <laughs> and I will um, step back. 
Let me 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'll just go back to there. Up against the wall. All right. And I'll, and I'll shout, good, good fighting team. Keep going. Good job. <laughs> no, <I'm sure. laughs> okay. Ole, it's you. Right. Okay. All right. That's presuming. Uh huh. Okay. I I am gonna try now that I've got newfound mastery of the bow. I am a. Uh, I am gonna. My magic is not doing anything, so I'm gonna try to hit her with my bow here. And I'm gonna roll in real life. <laughs> Which was worse. Let's oh, see. No. Yeah, that was worse. That was seven. Uh, okay, yeah, does not hit. As a bonus action, can I cast a cantrip? Well, ca casting a spell counts as another action. Okay, wasn't sure if that... I, I couldn't, didn't know if cantrips were different. No, yeah, this, it's casting a spell, so that takes up the action for your turn, but you can still move. I, I have no advantage for moving. I'll stay right... Okay. Now, Alathar, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to, for my action, disengage, and then I'm going to move, uh, oops, move over here. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to convert two of my sorcerer points into a first level spell slot. Mm -hmm. and I'm done. She, has the, she has the opportunist feat. That doesn't do anything if you disengage. Don't know. Yeah, that shouldn't do anything. That just avoids opportunity tax entirely. Yeah, I don't think that should do anything. All right, that's your turn. So that's my turn. I don't know if you would know this, but she did use her reaction to catch that. Oh, arrow. good. Good. Yeah, good point. That was already in this round. Yep, you're right. Uh, so Zerp, it is your turn. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, because um, you've seen Zerp do it. Uh, Okay, so Zerp saw her turn blue, I think, right? Or glow? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you'd let me do this, because I tried it once already, This not this encounter, but in the in the last encounter. But that makes Zerp want to try to, and I can't remember what it was exactly that I did last time, but like get in tune with that or or channel that. Like I, I remember getting some sense of it last game, and I don't remember what it was mm -hmm. now. I was hoping you'd roll. I think I asked you to roll a general wisdom check. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So no. you try, try to, like, you feel this, like, energy moving in you that feels like the adrenaline you move with. And you, like, want to tap into it, but nothing happens. Okay. Um, I'm fine with that being my action, too. Okay really really focused on it okay do you want to move anywhere nope i'm all done uh okay so it's her turn she is going to move up that way so you get opportunity attacks from two of you so there's opportunity attacks from zerp and from iguan all right, you hit. Well, you're at advantage. That that's going to hit with the quarter staff. Yeah, I'll try one more just in case I get a crit. Okay. Natural twenty. Oh, nice. And I got max damage. Very good. So you got ten damage. Pause.
18 damage. 18 damage and 10 damage. He's a pizza. Wow. The dice I got you are good. What? I said those new dice I got you are good. <laughs> yeah, now it's everything here. <laughs> cool. All right. You guys just whack her. And she's going to turn and look at you all. And as she, you do, her eyes aren't glowing blue. They glow black. She's undead. If she starts sprouting tentacles, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, me too. As as out as you are, Zerp is in. (laughs) Oh, he's beyond us. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I, I had an image I needed to put on, t- and it did not work. So um, black hole for a moment. Yeah, it was the wrong image. Yeah. That was annoying. Here we go. I'll try this one instead. Give me just a sec. Uh, huh? Is that one going to work for me? Do what I want it to? Yes. That is way too big. <laughs> um, not quite there. Oh, wrong dimension. Is that where I want it? Oh, I see. I didn't crop it correctly. That's why it's messing me up. One. Six. Suddenly, as her, her, she puts out her hands, and they're glowing blue, but her eyes glow black. Two half domes. Not half domes, so two domes of blackness. Like, two halves of the same sphere glow um, on, e- on either corner that you guys are not in on the battlefield. Am I missing some? Oh, yeah, one, one appears right in front of Rasheel. And the... Uh, and then she disappears. Well, I guess and- And that is Igwan's turn. We win! Right. Wait, that was my turn? No, no now, it, now it is Igwan's turn. Sorry. Oh. Uh, I'm going to go over and inspect this black sphere down here. The one that Rasheel's inside. Yeah, he's be- he's be- he's just be on the other side of it. Okay, roll a perception check. To Igwan, it looks like he's on the inside. Uh-huh. Well, no, no, I'm I'm so sorry. The spheres are like completely black. Like it's you, you can't. Mm-hmm. It just looks like an area of no light. Okay. Uh, but you yeah. don't. You can almost tell it's like undulating and shifting like a cloud would, but it's incredibly dense. Mm. I got an eight for perception. Yeah, you can't see at all into it. It's not catching the light or anything at all. All right. Hmm. Wait, I have something for this. I got it this level, and I need to cough. Give me a moment. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm going to cast Daylight directly in the middle of the Hmm. sphere. Mm -hmm. Happened to grab Daylight this level. 60-foot radius sphere of light spreads out from a point you choose within range. The sphere is bright light and shed dim light for additional 60 feet. If you choose a point on an object you are holding, or one that isn't being worn, I'm just choosing in the middle of the sphere. It would come with me. But mm-hmm. uh, If any of the spell's area overlaps with an area of darkness created by a spell of a lower... Sorry. Spell of or lower... 
the spell that created the darkness is dispelled. Okay, and what level are you casting that at? Third. At third level. And I can't get rid of my mic. Okay. You cast that and suddenly pierces inside and begins to melt away and it disappears. Sweet. Oh, I gotta count those two. And that's my turn. Okay. Um and that is Iguan Rashil, it's your turn. I will use my movement to go into the corner. And I'll use my action to ready an arrow for as soon as I see her reappear. All right. I'll, I'll fire at her. Um, that is it. That's your turn? All right. Um, that works. Oh, wait. Let's see here. I am going to... I do not have a third level version, but I... Do you think it's um do you think it's valid for me to cast the cantrip light on the other orb? You can try. Yeah. All right. I I don't I feel like in combat I can't really give you my opinion. Wow. I would say no, but <laughs> No. All right. Well then in but that I'm, case I'm also not standing next to you, and so unless unless always shouts it out, then do your thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it does seem it doesn't seem good I might just uh, I, I got uh, elemental weapon for my uh, third level um, one of my third level spell um, slots so I am going to cast that fireball? on huh? you didn't take fireball? I should have taken Fireball. Wait, I get two, don't I? Didn't I get two? I don't know. I went Warlock this level, so. Oh, <laughs> nice. I am pretty sure. I don't know. Well, one of them is, if there are two, I'll re-examine Fireball. But I have Elemental Weapon, and I'm going to cast it on my bow. Uh, so that I get some attack bonus and some extra damage if I hit, so. So All as right. to be ready for her to reappear. Yeah, but just so you know the difference, what Rashiel did is he's just he's like his bow is ready, so as soon as she appears, he um he fires, but you're not like this you're not necessarily gonna get to fire as soon as she appears in the same way. So right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I, I know I can't do that and draw a arrow because those would be two actions, right? Yeah, yeah. Readying an action would count. Out, would be, yeah. You'd either be readying your bow or um, casting this spell. Yep, I'm gonna cast it so that I can cool. fire when it's my turn next. Cool. Um, and that is okay. We're on to Alvar's turn. I'm gonna hide behind the big bear. Um, let's see. And let's see how far away are you? Well, I had one more square of movement, so I will go here actually. All right, I'm going to cast. As my action cast minor illusion and create a five foot box, five foot by five foot box in front of uh, Rashiel for him to hide behind. Cool. Let me hmm. Google box real fast. 
And then for my bonus action, I'm going to convert my last two sorcerer points into uh, another first level spell slot. Okay. And that will be all I do. Let me put that on there for him real fast. Watch out, giant image approaching. <laughs> ah! <laughs> five foot by five foot, right? Yeah, it'll just cover the cube that's in front of him, diagonally in front of him. Boop. Yep. Yeah, obviously it's not as big as it should be, but deep roll 20s being weird. Okay, that was Althar's turn. Um, it means we're back to Zerp. Ooh, okay. Uh, Zerp is going to run straight to where the Master was when she disappeared. Mm -hmm. Which I can't remember exactly where it was, but somewhere in this neighborhood. Uh, actually, it was right about there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And just swing in the space where she was. All right, roll for attack. That's a good idea. Roll with disadvantage, or just... Just a roll. Um, just roll. Okay. Are you you swing right where she was and you hit nothing. It was a good hmm. swing though. It was a really <laughs> good swing. It would have hurt if real she bad. Was... If she was there, that would hit her. Mm hmm. Do you spin around in a circle like a cartoon too? Yes. <laughs> Woo <-hoo>. Um. <laughs> He does, he does that all the time. Oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I keep wheel scrolling when I mean to like scroll down and it zooms out. Um, oh, I know, shoot. that design on their website drives me crazy. I think you can actually flip it. Really? But I forget how to do it. So that was... 50 feet of movement for me? Where was I? I was right here. Anyway, yeah. So that's all I got then. That's all you're going to. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. If Jeff, you go into something? keyboard, oh yeah, I was gonna say if you go into keyboard shortcuts, I believe if you change the use scroll to to pan, it should change that. Oh, okay. Ta da! Thank you. Cool. All right, that's your turn, sir. Yep, that's my turn. Okay, now the ground is going to glow blue again. Um, and suddenly you all hear the same sort of like weird like swooshing sound as... Ah. Two, mo two more black uh. orbs up here. But we gotta, I gotta stack you guys so we can actually see where you are. I guess I need to put these in the background, actually. So, we, yeah, I need to put these in the background. They they were right on top of. I think if you do, if you put them in, you can do a send send back or something. Uh huh. Let me try it again. I feel like there's a way on the image itself that you can actually send it backwards. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see. Below. It did not work. There. Mm. Okay. And they appear there and there. Um... And, oh, now I need to get her back. Oh, shoot. Where is her image? Nice. Okay. Oh. 
She's doubled in size. <laughs> yeah, she now as a giantess comes running out at oh all of you. God. And um a final form. Comes running out and actually let me send this one to the back before I forget. And is going to do an attack on you, Olwe. Oh my gosh, natural one. She's gonna do another attack against you, Olwe. Okay, that's a twenty-nine, so I'm guessing it hits. Uh yeah. It does for show. Sure. Okay. Um Look. so roll a constitution saving throw. Uh -huh. Aha, I have advantage on constitution saving mm -hmm. throws. Only for I am a war caster. Only for concentration. Oh, if you're oh. yeah, if you're concentrating on a spell, but you Never should mind. have your proficiency. No, that's yep. Yeah, Constitution. You have your proficiency bonus. I always forget that yep. sorcerers yep. have that. That's one of the best basic features of a sorcerer. Yep. Yeah, I've got plus five on it. You got a good roll coming up. Yeah, All Jacoby, right. you're due. Right? Yeah. yeah. You'd think. You'd think. Let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, roll this. 18 plus 5, I would, uh, yeah. Yeah, you make it. Uh, Good. And she's going to do damage. Uh, she hits you for 8 damage. Uh, my armor class is 12. Oh, well, that's, she's already, she already hit you when she rolled a natural 20. I'm sorry, it was actually 9 damage. So she, remember she... Yeah, you know what? I didn't type that in the box. I'm so sorry. So she rolled... A total of a natural twenty for a thirty-one to hit you. Um, so then you did the Constitution save because she was going to do an effect to you, uh -huh. um, and you, 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 your Constitution um, save stopped that you from getting a stunning strike against you. But then That's she rolled right. damage, and then the damage she rolled for by hitting you was a was a nine. Uh huh. Now um, there's the little bubbles here for my. I can't seem to click on my person right now. Uh, speed. Yeah, switch back to the arrow if you've changed. Yep. The... Uh, which one is health? The red, the green, or the blue? Usually red. Red. Yeah, I've been using the the green one. You're talking about the three the three uh, bars. Yeah. I generally use the green one for that because it's just the first bar. But you can use any of them, honestly. All right, cool, cool. Well, then I'm gonna I'm updating my uh, my my health there. All right, there you go. Okay, damage recorded. Okay, and she's gonna roll. Uh, yeah, she's it's good. She's going to roll against you a twenty-three to, to hit. And then an 18. She rolls a, two more attacks, a 23 and an 18 against you. 23 and 18 damage? No, those are just attacks to hit you. They're, those both beat, beat your armor class, correct? Uh-huh, both of them, yep. Okay, and she's rolling damage against you. Uh, and that will be 28 damage on both of them. She comes at you and just clocks you right in the head and then punches you straight into the sternum. I'm dead. Oof. So you fall back and again you like glow in blue and you like lay on the ground really gently as she does that. There you go. Um would we have heard Jacoby and her and the master in melee? Like would we have heard them grunting or whatever? Um go ahead and roll a perception check. As in, the other question was, did Rasheel see her come out because he had a readied action? Well, nope. um, I, I have a box say... in front of me that's taller than me, so I don't think I would have seen her. Also, the <laughs> I, the uh, oh, the black half circle, half sphere in front of you, I think it obscures the vision there. That's that's what I was more. Yeah. Figuring. The so box. No. You oh, I'm sorry. Box. Yeah, Rasheel, I, sh I I should have I should have addressed the fact that that readied action. Um, you it was for when you saw her and you you 
still have not seen her yet. Yep. So yeah, you guys are. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna get to this at the end of her turn. As all of you guys suddenly, it's like all the lights in the world go off. You don't feel anything, but you don't. You, the sounds every you can just hear the echo around you, and you hear just like what sounds like light footsteps, and then uh, and then um, because of the features of the jun- of this uh, training facility, you don't even hear a body hit the ground because it's such a soft landing. So no, not with those perception rolls. Did you? You did hear. I would say you heard so, a, a body moving, okay. and in the direction of where. Of where Olway was. No, not with that one either. <laughs> I mean, go for it, right? Like, Jacoby, I see you're typing. I'm going to wait till your message comes through. I'm hoping that he's making a perception check, even though he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Silently passes out. <laughs> That'd, That'd be, be great. Quiet. What do you. Yeah. So you get a zero for perception. You are asleep. But you're in a painless sleep, so that's nice. Um,. Uh, it would be Zerp's turn. No, 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 Zerp already went. Iguan. All right, I'm going to charge out of the Black Sphere. Just getting out. I want, I want you to roll a perception check. All right. Nice. Okay, you're fine. You can move in the direction you want to. All right. So he's just going to charge up here. Actually, no. Yeah. So you you take just for you like a step or two, and wow. um, and suddenly the darkness disappears, and you see the orbs there instead. Hmm. All right. And your turn. Uh, no, because I have Charger, which means I can attack. Oh, yeah, I meant, like, your your attack part of your turn. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. Oh, yeah, I know, you see, you got, you're a bear right now. Oh, uh, does a 13 hit? No. All right, and then another attack. Does a 22 hit? Yes, it does, roll damage. I think that's correct. Let me make sure. That's Twenty-one the damage. Dam- yeah, it's the damage. He's a bear. And I was charging with charger, which I didn't apply before because I forgot I had it. Oh yeah, you get the char- charger that bonus as well. Yeah, because I've got charger as my feet for fourth level. All right, and next is Rashiel. Um. Uh, yeah, I'll just move my 35. What yeast? See that she's there. Um, am I going to have any sort of... You know, you it's, just cover? it's like three quarters cover. And what do we do with range attacks and three quarters cover? I don't remember what we do for that. Nothing if you have yeah. sharpshooter. Do you have sharpshooter as a feat? Nope. Oh. Okay, yeah. So um, three quarters cover, they get it's a plus five to the AC. <laughs> okay. Well, I might as well. Might as well try. I'll make my shot. Uh, actually, it's a. 21 to hit. Oh, so really, you literally shoot right over her shoulder. Because with the plus 5 um, AC there, that does not hit. Yeah, so I mm. thought. 
steps is an amazing shot and you do i mean you're good enough you weren't going to hit iguan your ally but um no that one misses yeah Hi. that was my action as my bonus action i will pull out an arrow and i will snap it over my knee in frustration <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it? Okay. That was Rasheel. Olwe is asleep. Alathar. 11. Perception check. Okay. Um, try to move. You should be able to go in whatever direction you want. Okay. Let's see. I think... Yeah, I'll just go straight out out that way. <laughs> Whoa. Um, all right. How far is he from me? 45. So I see Olwe lying on the ground then? Yes, you do. And uh, he will go ahead and cast uh, Healing Word on Olwe. All right. So that's a whopping five hit points, but... Not dying now. You back well, up. Guess, yeah. yeah. You were dying before, anyways, but. And that was a bonus action to do that. Um, Rex, so far, I'm just assuming that because we haven't gone through the storyline yet with my sword and stuff, um, that while I've leveled up into Warlock, I'm not using any of its stuff <laughs> currently. So. Actually, I want you to go ahead and use it. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure, sure, that's the nicest thing I could say to that. But I really do want you to go ahead and use it. Okay. Because uh, thus far, he's he's probably not aware of it. Um, so here's what I'm going to say. Oh, uh, gosh. My computer just died on me. Oh, we can still hear you. Oh, because you got your phone. Yeah, I'm on roll time. Uh, or I'm on my phone with the other one. So that's fine. I don't need to be on it. So... Um, uh, once I get it back up, I will uh, get in. But till then, um, uh, Alathar goes to cast Sacred Flame, mm -hmm. and uh, as he does, he ends up actually connecting into something different, um, and ends up casting Eldritch Blast instead. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let me get a roll here. Oh, that that's terrible. <laughs> I got. Oh wait, that's that's the never mind. That was the that wasn't the attack roll. That's why. Uh, still terrible. Uh, Eleven to hit. Doesn't hit. Right. And he just kind of stands there for a moment and looks and tries to figure out what just happened. You want to describe what it, what does it what does it look like when you do um, Eldritch Blast? Um, so he, instead of, uh, the flame that strikes down, uh, a dark beam of energy begins to coalesce in his hands and he kind of looks at it for a moment and just like kind of tosses it away and a, uh, streak of dark energy flies out and then just kind of peters out a few, few feet forward because I didn't do so well. Wow. And you kind of glance, you glance back at the darkness you just came out of really confused at both of those things. Is that your turn? Yep. All right. Cool. I like how that, that got introduced. Zerf, you're up. Um. Okay. I'm I'm debating here. I don't want to cheese it too much. I'm trying to be in in character with this. Um. But but given what what's now happened with the darkness, mm -hmm. Zerf continues to be really intrigued by this, and and he can almost you know he can sense there's some connection there. So I want to. Take another shot at it, and and if it just eats my turn and I don't get a check, that's fine. Mm hmm. Oh no, yeah. Go ahead and get a check. Okay. Jeez. Oh, bud, I'm sorry. Man. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, I wanted love it. I wanted you to get it. I was like, I I want to tell you what happens if you get it. <laughs> um. No. So you are in that darkness and. Your reaction is different than everyone else's. You're, you don't have a reaction that makes you afraid of the dark. 
Instead, you immediately feel like a rush, almost like on a day where a warm wind blows into shade and you feel the warmth of the sun, even when you're in shadow, you feel a strange pulse of energy move through you inside the darkness and you reach, you reach out to it, but it just keeps moving past. Um, I'll, I'll sit down, uh, crisscross applesauce and, and really start trying to focus in, see if I can get this. As soon as you do, it's the the kind of wishing feeling all around you for a moment pauses and you feel your heart beat. And you, somehow like your brain perceives the very quick, very quiet word of a familiar voice. It's the master and you hear her just say in your mind. Good. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Um, okay, then it's, it's her. So she is going to disappear. Um, and then, with part of her movement, step barely outside of this orb of darkness next to Alathar, and she's going to roll an attack. Um, does 18 hit? Yes. Okay. She's going to try to make... Can she? She barely can still. She's going to try to make that a um, stunning strike. So roll a constitution save. You don't have one more image? Oh, you I do. Yeah, I you do have an image left. Good yeah, call. Uh, good, good point. Uh, it hits that one. Hits the image. Okay. The so she, uh, she... Her hand goes through it and she comes back for... Um, Another punch for a 28. And yeah, she, then she's going to put a key point into trying to get you to... Um, Oops. Well, that works. Uh, 21. 21, and you resist. Wow. And that hit is, like, ri right at your heart, and it, like, knocks, like, the breath out of your lungs, and you hear a crunch. Oh, oh god. It does, does 12 damage. Ow. Um, and then she's going to attack two more times for a 28 and a 15. Uh, and that's, well, hit me up with the damage on the first one. Okay. Um, eight damage. Okay. So on the second <laughs> one, on the second one, I'm going to cast shield. Okay. Which will stop that 15 from hitting me. Yeah, she's just you. You are gasping for air, and she comes back, and she like actually like, try, almost like trying to choke you out, like hits you hard in the neck, and it disorients you. But your amazing training as a warcaster, and she comes back in to punch you one more time in the sternum. You throw up shield, and her hand bare like punches into it, but doesn't punch through it, and you're barely on your feet. Yeah. And then she is going to step back into the darkness, and you guys lose track of her. Um, it is Igwan's turn. Why do I keep getting the turn where I can't do anything because the enemy is gone? Got any healing? Oh, wait, you're in a bear form. I'm in bears. I can't heal right now. Um, I am going to run into the darkness over here. All right, you run straight into the middle of the darkness. Yep. All right, what are you doing in there? Uh, I'm going to try and figure out what it is again. Uh, okay, yeah. Ro roll an investigation check. Ooh, investigation, even. I think. I really hope it's better. You know, I'll say roll investigation or Arcana, either one that's better for you. They are both the same. Okay, thought so. Both plus zero. Uh, 16? 16. Yeah, you're recognizing, especially based on what you previously did, this is a, uh, the spell darkness. Mm. Um. Uh. 
and yeah, so you run into the middle, and you know that this this is just this is just magic that like delete. It's like, uh, do you have dark vision? Well, I do in bear form. You do. So even you know, just with your mind as Iguan, that you see nothing as you go in there, mm. and you realize, yep, yeah, this is obviously this is an incantation. This is just magic. And you also know, like your light deleted it last time, so it's not permanent. And it's not doing any damage to you or affecting anything else other than sight. Oh, wait, actually, I don't have dark vision as the bear. Never mind. I'm reading through it now, and I don't have dark vision. Okay, but, but based on the fact that you deleted the previous light, mm. deleted yeah. light spell, and you're seeing nothing in there now, you, you can totally tell this is just magical darkness. Mm. Sounds good. All right. And for your turn? Uh, yeah, it's the end of my turn. Okay, um, I'll let you just do that perception that investigation check as just as you're running as a free action. So you did move movement uh, and a free action, so you have an attack. Uh, or another move. Hmm. I know free action really isn't a D and D term, but I think like I like checks if they're a reasonable check in the middle of a. Because no. free actions, free actions are a term from Pathfinder. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna move. They have them in here too. Are they called free actions? Though I think it's called something different. I'm gonna yeah. back up out of the sphere. Okay. And Is that, that your turn? Yep. All right, Rashiel, it's your turn. So Rashiel, um, you did see her pop out and attack your brother and go back in. Yeah. I'm highly doubting that she's still in there, but I am going to run in there. All right. Uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Uh, and as I'm running, I will yell to Alathar, back up into the, into the darkness. That's all I'll say. All right. Anything else for your turn? Nope. I'm just being kind of a little wussy at this point, so that's my turn. All right. Oh, wait, your turn. All right. I am going to use uh, meta magic and cast darkness with the purpose of undoing the previous darkness. See, you'd have to cast, like, um, you can't just, you, there's a, a specific spells that allow you, unless, is that part of meta magic? Yeah, yeah, I can use it to serve my purposes. So if, I, I was wondering if, since I have the power to cast darkness, I'd be able to use meta magic to undo darkness. Well, meta magic, you have those, so you have the meta magic, like uh, the the two abilities. I don't, I don't think either of those help me out, Jeff. If I'm missing something, because usually to like undo a spell, there needs to either specifically say in the ability or spell, or it needs to be like a um, to spell magic. Yeah, it has to be a, specifically say this is to delete an effect. Um, there's counter spell, which is immediate, and then there's um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on it? Adam Ravenwood uses it all the time. Dispel magic. Dispel magic. There's specific spells that can undo mm. magic. That's a really good idea, Jacoby. But yeah. Um, yeah, meta magic is for those specific abilities. Those two in that list. So, um, do you need a second? Let's see here. Yeah, I think, Jacoby, I think you need to select two of those. I don't know if you did, but it's things like subtle spell or twin spell or quicken spell careful spell i think you took i want to say you took distance spell at one point and maybe empowered you know i'm glad you said that because i have the worst handwriting that i've ever written in my life <laughs> next to the word meta magic i didn't know what either of these words were but you just said the word quicken and twin and those are that look now that i'm looking at it again i thought it was a p but it might be a q and the yeah. second word does look like twin. So I think I picked Quicken and Twin, and I didn't pay 
close attention to the fine print of meta magic there. So a quickened spell, it costs two of your sorcerer points. You can change the casting timing of a spell from an action to a bonus action. Uh-huh. Well, and then twin. I'm it now. And then twinned, it costs uh, one sorcery point per level of the spell, and you can twin it so you can cast it twice. Um, any cantrips are cost one still. So, like, if you wanted to do two chaos bolts, you can twin them for one uh, sorcery point. Mm-hmm. Right on. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I totally hadn't kept track of uh, how that feed worked. Um. You can also, with flexible casting, you can turn your spell slot, your spell, your sorcery points into spell slots. So if you're uh, like, yeah. hey, I want another, I want another uh, first level spell. Like I've already done that twice. Um, it costs two points for a first level spell. Don't come over here. Right on. Um, thanks for the the refresher, guys. Um, yeah. Uh, Dude, I don't know. I want to dig deep into my guts and just pull out my crossbow and uh, just like try to shoot at the master, even though I don't have any visual on her. Into that darkness. Just wherever she is, I'm just gonna like use my guts and spiritual instincts and just like let it let it fly. I'm gonna say you saw her attack Alathar, so you know it's at the orb that he's next to. So you can go ahead and roll for attack, but roll with disadvantage. Uh, what is that? What is that? So you roll twice, and we'll take the lower of the two. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, six, sixteen, and nineteen. Woo oh, not so, bad rolls. So 16, I still have uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 20, at 16, 21? Mm-hmm. Yeah, your disadvantage. I have, I have a plus four for my attack bonus, and it's an enchanted weapon, so it's an additional one. Wow. So uh, I would say, Rasheel, roll a perception check for me. Fourteen. Fourteen. You hear, all you hear is this, you do hear the distinct sound of an arrow rushing through the air, but it stops short. Roll damage. Roll damage. Woohoo! Stop yes. short. But it's like, in, it doesn't fall to the ground. It just stops. Whoa. Okay, so my, my, I can't argue with a 21 with disadvantage. Hmm. I see. can't argue with that. Uh, I, my D8 at? There it is. All right. So uh, my damage is 1D8 plus 2 and then an additional D. So 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, uh, uh, 11, 12. 12 damage. Uh-oh. Lost you, Rex. Oh. He must have muted. I got it. Jacoby, was that your, with your crossbow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your light crossbow? Is that right? Uh-huh. So does a D8. It does a D8 of damage. And then what did you add to that? Uh, the in elemental weapon adds an additional d4 of damage. I knew you were adding something. I couldn't remember what. So that, that's what it was. Makes sense. Google, why did you just sign me out of my own account? My only account. Now <laughs> I can't look at my spreadsheet, Google. Google doesn't trust you. They don't. I, I use this computer for work every day, and they're asking me to sign in with my phone. Like, please... Please type in the code that we just sent to your cell phone. We're not sure that this is you. You've only been on this computer for four hours today. Are you, I don't understand what's happening. Google doesn't trust me either. They're like, that's sketchy, Jacoby. You've been on four devices today. Mine We're texting you a code. Mine well, there we are. Is okay with it. And you did 12 damage, is that right? 
12 damage. Okay. So I legit hit the master. It's, that's what it seems like. <laughs> um. Okay, that's your turn. Is that is that everything all the way? I'll take a bow. Okay. <clears throat> I'll let I'll let that as a free action. Do you want to move anywhere? Nope. No, I think. Alathar. All right. Question for you. Uh huh. As a bonus action, can I do an arcane or arcana check to see if I understood what the heck just happened with the Eldritch Blast? Or would you make that a full action? No, no, no. Um, yeah. Trying to understand something that just happened to you. Yeah. So 17. That was magic that was not from your god. Do I have a, any inkling of where it came from? It was your ability. Um, <laughs> it came from your person, but a different part of you than your sorcery usually comes from. Okay. Um, other than that, um, do you have a hilt of that sword on you? I do. Well, it's not like in my hand, but... Yeah. No, you do not... You know... This came from a different part of who you are okay. entirely. Sounds uh, good. All right. Um, then I will cast, I will go ahead and cast um, Mirror Image once again. Mm hmm. And step into the darkness. All right. Oof. Yeah, basically. I'm not even, I just run in until I hit. Oh, is that your shield? All right. I mean, it is Zerp's turn. All right. Like touching his face the whole time, too. Still meditating. Ow, ow, it poked my eye. Oh, good to, good to know it's you. <laughs> I feel it now. I feel a connection. Maybe. There's a 17. Something begins to, like, spark inside of you. Something has changed within you. And inside the, inside the black, um, inside the darkness, you glow blue and you can see yourself, and suddenly the darkness moves off of you. Hmm. Whoa. Cool. Um, I'm gonna count that as your. That, you actually um, had to like tap into your key, and it literally felt like using your bodily force to do it. So that's gonna be your action. Do you want to move? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Zerp Zerp wasn't really trying to pay attention, so I don't know if you'd want to give him a, a perception check or maybe just his passive perception it being. 13. Um, As you move that, I think all, the only thing you really get a beat on is you don't know where anything is, but you can see, obviously, where Iguan is. Yeah, I'll just come up by him then, so. All right. Am I still glowing? Mm-hmm. You're glowing blue. Iguan, look! Oh, blue! I'm blue, too. Together we can be blue, together. Yeah! Let's rip some faces! Smurfs! Alright. Um, that is, so... Um... Elthar, you run in and you're touching... Um... Rasheel's face. And, um... Uh... Oh. Suddenly, you 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 feel someone grabbing you, and they try to hit you for a the first attack. I need, you gotta remember the type these in. First attack was the sixteen. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay, so you have your right. you have your images. Yep. <laughs> Aha! One image down. Okay. You feel something moving at you. The next one is for a twenty nine. Two images down. And then, um. 
The third one is a dirty 20. Three images down. I needed an 11, so. And then one more attack for a 21 to yeah, hit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, she only she got min, min max, like the minimum damage, not maximum damage. Minimum damage of six hits you right in the temple, and you f and you just fall back into the darkness. Are you down, Alathar? Yep. yep. Oops. Do you ask that in the darkness? Are you down? <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably uh, felt uh, me because at first I was doing all this and then. Alathar. Alathar. Yeah, I audibly speak. Okay. That makes it. Alathar. Zer it's Zerp's turn. Mm. I mean, Iguan? Yeah, I keep saying that. Iguan, it's your turn. All right. Uh, do I hear anything from over there? Uh, roll a perception check. It's not smells, so I don't get it. As I knew this combat would last a while. I didn't think it would go over an hour and a half. But here we are. Um, I thought an hour and a half is how long. A 20? 22. 22, yeah. You hear inside the circle in that direction like a scuffle. All right, I'm just going to dash in. I'm going to go there. And then go there for a total of 35 feet. Uh huh. And I'm going to attack right here, just next to them. Okay. Um, well, attack with disadvantage. All right, sweet. Actually, you know, I'm just going to tell right. you if you're if you're, if you're in bear form. One, four, okay. Come on, please get the same roll. Oh no, lower. My first roll was a 20. All right, so a total of 20 to hit. Total of 20 to hit. You slam down right there. Um, and, uh, and and you just hit the ground. There's right. nothing there. Sweet. All right. Is that your turn? Yep. Uh, Rasheel. Uh, having heard... I'm, I'm assuming that I heard... Roll a perception check just in case, because if you rolled a one right now, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Well, it was close. It was a uh, three plus three, so six. Oh yeah, you you just heard like a like like Alfar like breathe, and you you heard some soft impacts. Yeah, with that, and then hearing Iguam run up behind me, and then hit the ground behind me. I'm gonna run this way till I yeah pop out. And I'll, again, ready my action for, with an arrow, if I see her. Okay. Anything else? That's my turn. And I'll, Always. I'll, I'll still shout out, Alatha, Alatha. Always, your turn. Okay. Let's see here. Um... I think I'm going to do um, the same thing that I did before. With her being in the dark, I don't know. Yeah? I, I don't know if I could do anything better than that. So let's just throw this uh, D20 here. That wasn't as good. Let's see. D ten. Fifteen. Uh, with your bow, I mean your mm -hmm. crossbow. It does, that doesn't hit. Let's see. Um, with my warcaster, I'll cast. Prestidigation as a bonus action. Well, again, that's a cantrip, and we, you can't like that counts as either you use the crossbow or you 
You do one or the other. Do, do you my, to war ca- my Warcaster says... Oh, wait, because um, it's a cantrip. Yeah, it says... Um, oh, man, was it that? I read something just a second ago. You could, you could quicken a spell as a bonus action. Oh, yeah, you, is that that's, that's it. it? That's it. That's the one. Yep, quicken via meta magic. Bonus action is a spell. Nice. Yeah. So you could cast a cantrip or a higher spell. Yeah. So press prestidigation was what I was thinking. Uh, gives um, gives the master a um, minus four on saving throws or attack throws. What what spell is that? Uh, prestidigation. I don't think it does that. For the next hour, it says that it... uh, How do you spell that? P-R-E-S-T-I-D-I-G-A-T-I-O-N. Yeah, yeah, that one one creates, like, random magical effects. What? Am I... I I think uh, you wrote that the wrong thing. Uh, Bane. Dang. Oh, Bane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know there's a spell that does that. It's not a cantrip, but it's a it's level one spell. Yes, it is. Um, yep. It costs you one sorcerer point to do it, to quicken mm-hmm. it. Well, here's the thing. You, um, yeah, the spell I'm reading, it. it's up to three creatures, but you have to be able to see them. So roll a perception check. Oh. Perception. Uh, oh, God. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Uh, Fourteen. Okay, yeah. You you look around, ready to cast that spell, but you don't cast it because you realize that you don't perceive her anywhere. Bummer. Well, there you go. I tried, y'all. <laughs> you sure did. All right. Now, suddenly, behind you guys. One of the black orbs disappears. And I'm going to say, with that perception check, oh, wait, you turn around, you realize it disappears, and no one's inside of it. Um, and it is Zerp's turn. Uh, I'm going to try to dispel or chuck this uh, magic sphere in front of me. This zone. Kind of like okay, I did you the want... one above me. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know what I'm playing with here. So roll a wisdom check. Oh boy. Okay. As you're glowing blue, you reach out your hands and you feel yourself interacting with it, but it doesn't move. Cool. I am into this. That's my turn. All right. Um. Again the. The giantess returns. No, I'm kidding. I'm just getting her back out on the battlefield. And she's going to appear right here next to Olway and attack with uh, 21 to hit. That hits right, Jacoby. That, that certainly does hit. And that's for eight points of damage. I... Uh, I am dead. Again. Again. Then she is going to disappear, but appear right next to, um, Iguan. And roll for an attack of a dirty 20 against Iguan. It's... Okay. She's gonna... Can't she do that? No, she can't do that this turn. Um, Okay, 11 damage on that first hit. And you feel a strike hit hit your bare form, like right in the gut. Mm. Okay, and then she rolls in another attack for a 19 against Iguan. 19 against Iguan for 12 points of damage. Sorry, damage 12. And then, um, and last attack, a 19. 
that hits, right? Sorry. Uh, yeah, that hits. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never, I'm sorry. She already got you down with that previous one, so she doesn't throw that last hit. She feels your bear form falling down. Mm. Um, so I'm and with the, re with the remainder of her movement, she's going to run at Rasheel and that last attack focused on him. Rasheel against you for a dirty 20. Is, does yes, he get in it? Does my, yeah, does my uh, held action... Yeah, you fire. Okay. But yes, that does hit. And natural one, so... Mm. She comes that... at you from an angle you weren't expecting. You were looking to the darkness and beyond it, and um, she's mm -hmm. going to do 10 points of damage against you. Dick. Rack. <laughs> <laughs> Only you and I, Eric. <laughs> I, I, I heard it, <laughs> and that is and that is her turn. All right, so Iguam is going to run over here and attack her. All right, and you have advantage. Sweet. Uh, 23 to hit. 23 hits. Roll damage. This is gonna hurt. Uh, 10 damage. Alright. And then claws come in. Oh, natural 20. Nice. Ooh, this is really gonna hurt. Rashio, you see that she has blood all, like, on her ripped clothes. Her face is is still entirely calm, but she's pretty beaten up. Also, the previous attack should have had plus five because I was moving more than okay. five in a straight line. And then uh, this one was 20 damage. Five and 20, okay. Sorry, just doing some math. And that's my turn. Okay. And where does that get take us? That's Iguan, Rasheel, it's you. A point blank arrow to her face since it's so uh, calm. Uh, I get advantage and I get to reroll one. Both are 17. I'll reroll this guy. And 19. So uh, that's a 28 to hit. All right. Image of 11. Okay. As you fire that, it is insane that she's getting hit by a bear. Without looking, she uses her reaction in the key point to grab Naturally. the arrow as it's, as it's leaving your bow. Naturally. I mean, it makes sense that she would just, yeah, probably grab it before I even released it since I'm right there. So, I mean, cool. got to try. Um, right. What, what, what's next for you? Yeah, I need to get well. I'll I'll just do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that's my bonus action. Uh, uh that's a twenty six to hit. You got it. Roll damage. I do not do not get the sneak attacks of just ten. <laughs> oh, Braden, how do you want to do this? Hey, oh. no. uh, she'll grab my arrow before I release, and I'll just back off that as she holds the arrow, lean over and fire again at her. Right in the face. Again, I'm, I'm pissed that she's just so calm and she's beating the crap out of us, so. Okay, so you, you, where do you shoot? Right where? Right in the forehead. But it's like upwards. Since she's so tall and I'm so short, it's like, yeah, up up through her forehead. 
Nice. Okay, and you fire just point blank arrow. And she calmly holds in position as the arrow fires and is at that velocity. You're so your bow is strong enough, you're good enough. Starts firing directly between her eyes. And you 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 swear you see it go into her skull. But then suddenly there's a blast of blue. And um, there's a blast of blue. And the arrow is being pushed back out and she's floating. And she just looks into your eyes and says, Well done, Rashio Meliamenthil. And the blue glow slows down. And she rests her head. She just set, puts her feet on the ground and looks, and looks at you and bows and turns to Iguan in their form and bows. And you guys beat the master. You. I Unconscious. You're crazy, lady. <laughs> and she, she calmly um, goes, goes, walks back up past you all. Doesn't make eye contact with any of you. And as she gets to her cloak, two of her disciples, all of her disciples have not stopped bowing. And she gets to her cloak and she puts her arms out and they all, they drape the cloak around her and tie it for her. And again, the cloak is gigantic. It's billowing, like the way kind of like a, a giant um, trench coat kind of like puffs out, but it's like uh, in a, what we would call like a East Asian, like style. And, and, and she just calmly gets draped again. And you notice now that like, all of her wounds and all of her exhaustion is completely gone. And you all notice that suddenly a blue energy and flame is moving in you. And you feel all the wounds and like just kind of melt away. And you just feel this invigoration. And Olwe and Alathar, you wake up as you're being lifted by some energy as you stand back on your feet. And you guys are back to full health, full HP and everything. Woohoo! Nice. Well, um, what happened? Detective Colma. You hear her voice calm, say, say calmly across, Detective Colmock. And he's, he's sitting there like eyes wide, like pipe in his mouth. And he stands at attention and salutes. And, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, Commander. Just seems you've chosen well for your gray cloaks. They will serve your purposes. And she calmly just turns on her heel and walks back into the temple. Hmm. And Komak just sits there and looks at you guys. And then she goes, Yeah! And he just runs out at, he runs straight at Rasheel and just grabs you by the shoulders and is just shaking you. And it picks you up and he's hugging you and just like profanity out of his eyes. Like, that was the greatest thing. I can't believe he's actually, he's big enough. He throws you in the air a little bit and throws you back down and he slaps Iguan. Look at all of you. I, I didn't know, no idea that was, I didn't know you were capable of that. I've never seen her go down in a fight before. Incredible. He's so hyped. And then Tuvian and Amos are back there. Actually, both of them smiling for a change and clapping. I have gotten a bit stronger over this training period. And yeah, I've some things about myself. Yeah, I'd say so. That's incredible. I, I've, on, I've only seen you use darkness like that once. What did I say? I say if you guys, if you pull this off, drinks on me. But you, you, you took, care, took care of her disciples and you faced her alone. Then again, I guess between the five of you, that was uh, not quite so hard, now was it? That is, you, you, you really had a corner and outnumbered a few times there. Well, we That's unbelievable. Through, we had to go through a lot of our stuff. I mean, I'm tapped out at this point. I had to I pass don't... out three times. <laughs> what? That's good for character. Actually, I, I don't think... I think you should... What she just gave you, you should be back to normal. Oh. I'm well, let, me, let me check. Yes, it does feel like that might be the, same, the case. Yeah. That's sort of the idea of this place. I mean, you've been here for two months. How did you not figure that out so far? 
I don't care. <laughs> you annoy me, but you were incredible in there. You were incredible in there. So is it, That's hold fantastic. On. Al, is it, you're not so bad. For sure what? Is it like we got a long rest? Yeah. Okay. That's the idea. Cool. That's it. Drinks on me. This yeah. minute. Let's... Come here. You, get out of that bear suit. It's not a suit, but... <laughs> and he's already out of the bear form when he says this. Smith, get over here, too. We're going. We're going right now. Who? We are day drinking, we're evening drinking, and we are night drinking. Follow well, me. This is going to be the go. best. All right. He's just, like, jazzed. I'm gonna, I'll give you guys a second if you want to say or do anything. Um, yeah, I'd like, I think I'm gonna, um, no, never mind. I'll wait. Did anyone find <laughs> it weird that there was a monk casting darkness? It seems peculiar. No, weird, weird stuff happens all the time. She's just multi-classing. It's not a big deal. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, some kind of specialty. I mean, I don't understand monks. The best I've understood is uh, Zerp here, and uh, he's just chaos. Oh, I need a drink. So, so how did it? How did it end? I missed it. Who who took her out? I, I, I missed it too. I think it was Igwam. You you were you were doing a number on her. I just not done, Igwam. I just kept clawing and biting I didn't really think before I knew yeah, it was gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I think we did well we fought well together I think we still need to work on some of our tactics <laughs> better together but oh yeah I like my tactic overall I think we're getting better we we, um, we held up a long for a long fight. Um, yes, I... Um, just, just just, a point of order. Does anyone else... Uh, Igwam, do you have the ability to heal or anything? I felt a little tapped on my magic and healing, uh, but... I do, but while I'm a bear, I can't exactly heal. Fair enough. So I was focusing more on keeping you all safe in the regards of... hurting... What about you always? I, I can do healing magic. Can you do it as well? I don't have any healing magic at this moment. Um, I think I just need to carry a couple potions or get better armor. Yes, I do feel the same about armor. For some reason, I feel like I might be able to. I, I'm experiencing some interesting things today. I might what happened back there with that magic of yours? I don't know. It, uh, it came from somewhere other than my normal, uh, my mm. normal attacks and my normal abilities. Uh, I think I've discovered something new, but I don't fully understand it. It's not, not from the divine. I'm not sure it's from the arcane either. Um, I don't know. It was interesting. Anyways, uh, it didn't seem like it was from nature. Yes, uh, I agree. It didn't seem very effective either, but... Uh, that too. It was strong, it just didn't hit. Not as effective as claws. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But uh, all of you showed some, some great new skill and abilities. Uh, Zerp, uh, wow, you are fast. He uh, He actually doesn't react at all. He seems lost in thought, which is not something you've ever seen from Zerp before, but he didn't seem to hear you. Uh, Zerp. Why? Uh, and then you see, like, the old Zerp come back. <laughs> um, how are you doing? Um, I'm good. That was fun. Yes. You, I'm hungry. You seem to have... Ah, yes, I agree. Maybe we should just go get some food and some drink. Uh, Kolmok has uh, offered drinks, at least. I'm sure we could coax him into some food. Probably after that great show. Yes, I didn't think he. I don't think he thought we could do as well as we did. I, I'm <laughs> quite impressed with us as well. The fact that we were able to uh, 
take down this master. Oh, you done, mean, everyone. You guys use claws. Komak heard you said, he goes, of course we're getting food. Come on. <laughs> he's he's leading, leading you out of the Hall of Justice at this point. I follow him. Yeah, same. I also follow. Yeah. Rashiel, his giant arm goes around your head, and he just, like, puts you in a headlock as he's pulling you and gives you a noogie. Uh, no okay. Oh. You do know that the rest of us were involved in this fight just as well. Oh, you were? And he grabs you I and gives you a headlock and a nogi too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please don't mess with the hair. Please. Oh, yeah. He, 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 mess, he messes up the hair. He goes for it. <sighs> Every it's time. Sign of appreciation. I can't believe it. I thought. You guys might be the first version of, of the Grey Cloaks, and you die in a couple months, and then I'd have to find new Grey Cloaks. I was even starting to like you. But look at wait. this! You look, you're look you actually capable! I've never oh, died. Wait, what? That, what's that last thing you just said? They have no confidence. You're actually, actually capable! It's amazing! You were, you were expecting us to die in a couple months. Oh, so just... In this line of work, it's amazing that this... People die all the time. Not all of you die, but like one of you or two of you. Oh, five of you. Have Don't you have like a duty to, to inform us of, of these da these dangers before you recruit us? I um you you fought gelatinous cubes in they tried to dissolve you. Which yeah, you didn't tell us about? Yeah, I didn't know that either. You also fought goblins with I assumed you knew that you were getting into dangerous work. You saw yeah, what I do. I work for the military. Like I, we're gonna be a special force to protect the city. Like you, yeah, you, you, you think, aren't you also the what? head of intelligence? He's oh, got the point. I was exaggerating. I was just thinking like you guys were maybe you wouldn't do, and maybe I'd have to fire you, or maybe you'd leave after the end of your six month contract. I don't know. Or something terrible would happen. One of you would murder the other. I don't know. I didn't think it would work out so easy. <laughs> the first with my first recruit, yeah, and here you are. You're actually working as a team. It's incredible. I, I was just exaggerating. Fun. Have fun, Alathar. I am having fun. For God, for the fun. sake of the gods, just enjoy yourself for a minute. I'm oh, yeah. celebrating. You guys are in the street, and he's screaming these words. This very tall, middle, like upper middle age half orc is screaming, and people look scared. He just <laughs> roars. Rawr! He's so he's so hyped. I I think they would have done better if they had all had claws. We need to get them claws like me. Don't yeah, want that's, claws. That's yeah, claws would make me uh, not useful in any of my other skill sets. But claws are amazing. Mm. You can rip and tear stuff with them. You can eat using them. They're an all-use multi-tool. Where are the drinks? This way. This way. Where is the tavern? I feel like I've, I've just been hanging. Oh, I'm point, my normal set. You know, <laughs> not a bear. I agree, know. brother. That does seem like quite the hazing that we received. Here, fight these disciples. Here, fight the master. Come on. Yeah, I can tell Come you, on. though, that was not part No idea she was going to try to do that. No Why idea do you she think wanted she to did that? So when do we I, have to fight you? I don't care. I, I'm too tired to fight. If you try to fight me, I'm not mm -hmm. just going to walk away anywhere. And, and say, you win, nice time. I'll cut off your head, is what I'll do. Don't try to fight me. I, feel like the I don't fight fair. I don't fight fair. I have sand in my pocket. I'll throw it right in your eye if you try to come to me. Well, you saw our first fight. I don't always fight fair either. No, see, okay, I see what you mean, but that wasn't what most people would call fighting. <laughs> hey, it was a fair use of the rules and uh, a clever one, in my opinion. I agree. I thought it was quite clever. I, I was quite impressed. I'll give that. you that, but it's not fighting. I think because it's fighting. sometimes making someone go away is the best course of action. Yeah, that's only the words of someone who can't bash heads. But that's fine. You do <laughs> your thing. That's that's fine with me. And he uh, he starts. He actually goes um, north across the bridge toward. You guys are you've walked across the bridge towards Caf Castle Never. And you go past the castle gates and around to a district you've never been in. And in this district, like, it's different. It is so, it is so, like, consistent. Every single street looks 
exactly the same. Every win like every street has a theme of its architecture and it is pristine. And unlike the busy streets of the Peninsula District, the Peninsula District is where you've mostly been. That's where the Hall of Justice is. And it looks like a, a nice busy town. This town, this part of town is just perfect. And you notice you had to walk through some gates and there were some city guards. But Colmock out, out in the front, you all walk in. Um and you're getting some stairs, but only a couple blocks in, there's this um, uh, big set of glass doors on, on one street corner. And you all walk in. You see above it, it's um, uh, a sign above it that says the Sublime Sanctum. And they, you, walk, you walk in, and there's like draperies on the walls, uh, cushions on the floors everywhere. Um, and there is a a man with uh, very a, a man with green skin standing behind the counter. Oh, hello. Good day to you. How can I help? And Komak, we are here for food. We're here for drink. And I'm bad for it all. <laughs> and a, even a, a, Amos and Tuvian are like whispering to each other and kind of laughing. Is that, mm, all right. Right this way. And... He leads you, and it's just the, the, you go through another curtain, and there's just, like, gorgeous fountains and tropical-looking plants. It's actually, like, humid and hot inside of here a little bit, and there are people waving giant branches. And you see this whole, like, open floor seating of mostly cushions. Um, Komar's like, not there, not no private room, private room. And he takes you back to a staircase. It's like a winding staircase, um, a winding staircase up, uh, in the middle of of this huge room, have you ever seen um, Spirited Away? There's a huge staircase in the middle of the bathhouse era mm -hmm. area. That's like a it's like a what you, like a it crosses back over itself, and you start walking up that, and you go into one of the sides, and the side panel door slides, and you go in, and there's this uh, low table, um, and the the man with the green skin motions in there. Right this way. Enjoy your room. An attendant will be with you shortly. And you all go in there, and Komak literally just, like, falls onto some giant cushions by this low table. Oh! Oh my gosh. I'm using some of my savings tonight. Sit down, you wild men, you. And you all, you all sit down, and there's, like, a, a, a menu on a leather a piece of, like, a a leather board, like a board wrapped in leather with like gorgeous handwritten type all over it with some ridiculous drinks. Oh, I don't want you guys to have the whole thing. I just want you to have the menu. <laughs> I don't want you to have everything. Let's see what it looks like if I copy I it into here. Shot. Watch the menu. I'm First excited of... about this. Well, dang. Oh Whoa. That looks terrible. No, that's awesome. Do you like it in there? I can email it to you if you'd rather me do that. No, it's fine. You sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then a uh, another board. There's a food menu. Um, Alifar, you, like, sit up nice and proud, and you are just, like, prepared. I just sent a, a bunch. And Rasheel, you're like, this is a little pretentious. But um, Zerp... And Iguan, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what? what is this? And the, there's a lot of beautiful cushions. Like This is too fancy. And he's just going to lie down on the most comfortable thing. Uh-huh. Soon an attendant comes. And, and two, two elvish women attendants come in. And they pour glasses of water. And they bring some hot tea. And they set it down. Um, and they... What one just one just says calmly. Your waiter will be with you soon, and walks out of the room. I want to find. Col Comac just leans back. Oh, well, that was amazing. This place is kind of stuffy. What are you guys gonna have? I think one of everything sounds good. I like that idea. I also Just... like that idea. It sounds variety. All right. You know what? Never mind. 
Waiter! And he starts yelling for the waiter. Garc- Garcon? Garcon? <laughs> Why, and he's poking his head out of the curtain. And uh, another person comes. And this person has, like, it's a humanoid with, like, shiny black skin. Oh, oh, hello, hello. How, how, how may I help you? One of everything. Uh, for, for all of us. Each of these, I want a cask of that, a cask of that. I want a bottle of that, another bottle of that. Now. And the food, just bring, I don't know. Oh, hell yeah. Bring, <laughs> bring two of everything to start. Now. So, here. And he starts, puts a bunch of gold in his hand. Is that enough to convince you, by the way I look, that I can still pay for it? And you, you see him, like, shining his, his badge a little bit. He's already acting a little bit drunk. He may have been drinking while he was watching you <laughs> he was guys. Pre-gaming. Um it's like, oh, thank you, sir. That's very kind. Well, right on it. And he claps and attendants follow him and you can see through the curtain they rush down the hallway. Comac sits down. <sighs> he pulls out a, a flask. Oh, to the five mangiest mutts I have ever recruited, giving me the laugh of my life. You all just might make good gray cloaks after all. And he chug he chugs a little bit and he passes it to Tuvian who takes a bit. Amos takes some and they hand uh Zerp, they hand you the cast. I mean the uh the flask. Woo. Chug. Do you pass? Uh no. <laughs> you just try hanging on to it? And Colmox says Little one, you're supposed to keep going with that. No, I'm just, just, just keep, keep, drink, keep drinking, this up. Keep drinking. You fall. No, well. no, no. Every, yeah. everyone has to drink after everyone in this room. Pass it on. And oh. Alathar, you're next. Oh, okay. Alathar. What? What is it? It's liquor. What kind? It Pinky. doesn't matter. Alathar. Smoky liquor. I don't want it. And then he passes it on. You'll drink it. Do it now. Oh, you're going to make me? You'll drink it. We're on the team. I don't want it. Oh, you think that's the most disgusting thing you're going to drink with me tonight? I drink what I want to drink whenever <laughs> I'm drinking. Oh, I'll get you drinking and pass it on, little elf man. Pat passes it to Igwam. Igwam takes the sip and then passes it. To Rashio, who's last. Now, I know what you're going to do with it. You, you, you my don't. heart is my heart is in Ohio. Go Gosh, ahead. Take, take, just take a sip or hand it to me. Hand it to him. All right. And as you guys are, as he's fighting with you over this, literally the same 30 people come back with a bunch of trays of glasses and like, Three bot, the two bottles of wine, um, a cask of of the pilsner, and a bottle of the gin, a bottle of loot. All of which, all just all of them, they 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 put down in front of you and start pouring out glasses, and you guys have just drinks galore. Start drinking. All right. So, Alethar to the bitter cloak of Chardonnay. <laughs> Yeah. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Maybe because I, as Rex, would have gone for the same thing. <laughs> that sounds amazing. What did that feel like? What Man, what, how did that feel out there? That was incredible. It felt like we were getting our asses kicked. You certainly were. Cause... I can't really tell. To be, I'm, I'm sorry, to, I don't want to burst the bubble. I can't tell if you had her up against the wall a few times, if she didn't know what to do, or if she was letting you get hits in, or if it was a little bit of both, or if that was her maximum effort, or that was her medium. I, I'm not exactly sure what went on. What I know is that you handled it really well. Let me tell you, I would not last long one-on-one against that woman. And none of you would last one-on-one long against me. So you fought really well as a team. I'm not really sure what was going through her head. She's old. Maybe she's gone crazy. I don't know. And he's just like chatting with one person or another. I mean, hey, just, I, 
I'm sorry, Amos and Tuvian are just like like really calmly listening as they always do in drinking. Sorry, go ahead. Have have you seen her do this with others before where she had to fight them or was I I got the impression that um what we did to her disciples was humiliating and she wanted to um humiliate us then after that, which didn't quite work out in her advantage. Uh, I think she underestimated our abilities. Um, plus, being able to actually heal was helpful because that is part of my abilities here, and that felt a little crippling in the first fight to say basically, hey, you can't do one of the things that you're good at. Yeah, you know, I don't think so. From what I hear, she's, uh, she's strict, but all her disciples are very devoted to her. They all just really can't get, like, uh, they work very, very hard, but they, they act like she hung the moon. And apparently she sits around and meditates all day and talks to some of the higher-ups. From what I understand, she barely ever even watches sparring matches. Like, if, if there's a some initiate, someone's going to be, like, I don't know, gaining a new cup belt or whatever the hell they're doing, and I don't understand that thing. But if they're going to, like, be initiated to something, she might sit in for a more experienced spotting match or something. So she pokes her head out and she examines things a few times a week. But she's mostly just taking everybody in like cute little meditation retreats back in their temple chambers. So I've never seen her do anything like this, not even for her own initiates. It's very strange to me. I, 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 don't, I don't know. How was... long has she been in power? Oh, well, I mean, I won't call her in power. I mean, we work. For Lord Never Ember. She and that sure. she, yeah, she and that. Yeah, yeah, in that position. Oh, well, I mean she's been here as long as I have, and I think we're just about some of the only people left from the old days. The last the last time the goblins were coming. We were trying to hire hire mercenaries and I, I was just getting in with the city as a as a sergeant and they were putting together a militia just to defend the lands north of and she came in on the ship from like over the ocean way on the other side of the ocean. And she was apparently originally from the forest, and then left and traveled the world and came back and uh, brought some powerful mercenaries with her. Not people who worked for her, but just people she knew. And, I mean, I'll tell you, her amazing battle, I mean, the amazing thing she was able to it's why um, Dagot Neverember kind of was able to rise up and be our Lord Protector again. They really turned the back the city from being sacked. I'm sure you all know about the uh, the spell plague that happened. Most of you oh. were alive for that. My father spoke endlessly of that. I'm I'm sure. Brashio, you were probably a young man as the water was all ravaging around. Water deep was hit pretty hard in some places. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Shortly after that, most people forgot that everyone was taking care of themselves and. Neverwinter was about to be, what was left of it, destroyed. Orcs, goblins, trolls, everything moving south, enjoying the chaos. That's how I got my job, and that's the same time she appeared. But um, I had no problem with her being named commander. I didn't want the job. I I'm, I'm wanted to get out of military duty and kind of just tired. Uh, that's that she's, she's been, she came here and one by one found disciples and She's been at that for the better part of 30 years now. Uh, out of character question, how, I can't recall, or maybe we don't even know, but how long after the spell plague is this? Uh, so this is the year 1500. Um... I should know the date because I've looked at it so many times. Let me look at it for you real fast. Thirteen eighty-five looks like. Yeah, that there's different timelines. Oh, because I'm I'm I'm. Just now in the in the part of the Dritz series where he's uh -huh. around Neverwinter post spell plague. <laughs> uh huh. I so I've changed time. a lot of the details. I have this happening um in the late 1400s, not 1300s. Oh okay. So I yeah you know I wrote you know I changed this. I said it um it I moved the dates around. So the spell plague happened about 30, 30 to thirty five years ago. 
Mm, okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I didn't know anyone actually, any of you actually knew the lore to this, so I was just like fudging it wherever I wanted, <laughs> but uh, now I'll give better explanations. I've never heard of this spell plague before. What is it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was bad. It was the whole world that turned upside down. It was, uh, it, it was a lot to do with the gods, actually. There was a, a breaking of the order of, of things uh, due to the gods. So uh, that's actually where I've come to, to understand my my role now is to help Lord Ao and uh, maintaining this so the spell plague never does happen ever again. Suddenly, Tuvian speaks up and says, Yes, that's exactly right. It all started with the goddess Mistra being assassinated. The hands of Sirik and Shah. You know of Mistra, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. Nope. Goddess of magic. Without, without her divine hand, everything fell apart. Arcane users no longer had their abilities. The gods were forced to come down. Some of them take actual shape and be vulnerable. There were many people like you, Alathar, at that time, I remember, who were given special abilities and powers. Most of them lost their abilities from the divine after that, so you are quite a rarity to be receiving it. How old are you? I am uh, 28. To be received, be born and receiving your powers even after the spell plague had ended. Yes, quite strange. Though many like you received divine magic. Many were called oracles. Some began to believe they were. But the gods, the demons, the uh, arcane, the dragons, any force tried to take hold of the chaos. You should read up on it. The battles that ensued across the continent alone were worth volume. And Amos just is looking down at her at her, at her drink as they're all you're all talking. Uh, inside check on Amos. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Um, she looks uncomfortable. And she's like av avoiding looking at anyone. Amos, are you are you saddened by this conversation? You've hardly heard Amos speak up to this point, and she looks up at you, Sergeant Amos. By the world being turned upside down? Yeah, I think anyone should be saddened by that. And then Komak looks back and forth at you. Are you two going to have a fight when we're trying to get drunk? Let's stop talking about history. Everybody drink up. And he starts pouring into everybody's glass. He literally has, has like the bottle of liquor and he's pouring into everyone's glass. We can ask questions as we go, but we have to drink while we ask questions. All right? Hmm. Drink, drink. I've heard this stuff makes people go crazy, so... Exactly. Really Good. Yes. Questions. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. It's it's great. It's great. You'll That's enjoy hard. it. So, um, with all of this, this fighting the disciples and the master, and all of it, we saw basic training done. You've got that right. Don't yes. worry about it. Tonight so, you will be your last night staying in the barracks. And that Tomorrow. was my next question, that you mm. had uh, promised that you'd secure us some uh, accommodations. What, what yes. do we have for us? Oh, you'll find out. I got the best. Excellent. I like to hear that. I've, you know what? The Lord, the Lord Commander, he's taken a shine to me. Um, and some of you notice, as he says that um, Tuvian's beside him and Tuvian rolls his eyes. Let me tell you, that Lord Commander, he uh, he really likes, he believes in what I'm doing. We see things eye to eye. I'm not really having any trouble getting the, uh, you know, the funding I need for different projects. He loves this idea of Grey Cloaks. I think it's going to work out really well. You know, when there's 
any sort of red tape stopping you from doing something makes it a lot harder to keep going. But no, I was able to get the best spot for you I could. Best in the city, I'd argue. Speaking of the gray cloaks, do we already have our gray cloaks? Gray you don't, cloaks? no. Okay. When do we get these uh, gray cloaks you are always going ah, to... Calm down, calm down. We'll get there tomorrow. All of that tomorrow, tonight we drink. You spend one more night in that smelly hole called the barracks. And then we move on to the next phase. And then we'll have a you know, contract for you to sign all of those things. Yeah, we decided on um, the six months, including training. So you'll be with me through, I believe, it's right at uh, Midwinter's Day. And, um, uh, I guess out of character question: Did we get paid a hundred gold total then for the last two months? Is that that is correct? Okay. Did we already receive that? Yes. Okay. I was going to catch you guys up on that stuff in a minute, but uh, I okay. see gold is gold is on your mind. So. I just just add just thinking through the different things. Uh huh. Oh, totally. Totally. Making sure our contract was fully fulfilled. As is your right. Yeah, so Colmock is just now drinking and having a jolly old time. So what, what's next, Colmock? What, uh, what do you have planned now? After training? Oh, ha. Sure. Ha, ha, ha. I have all sorts of work for you five to be doing. Believe me, we got all sorts of problems in this city, around the city. Out into the forest, up into the mountains. Do any of you know how... Are any of you seafaring? Have you ever, ever been on boats much before? Oh, my brother has mm. before. I feel like I've been on a boat before, but I can't remember much about it. Oh, if you, okay. need, somebody, you need somebody to master a boat, I'm your man. I'm, I'm Wait, what? That. You? you? You've been on a boat before? My father... I was basically born on a boat. Oh, interesting. Like a, cool. like a rowboat? <laughs> I was basically Not, born under a boat. If you merchant boat. A boat. A me- Wait. Wait. I didn't know that. I think your people are into tinkering. The same thing you do. Nope. My father was a sea-loving jerk. So, uh, your father was a merchant? Father was all sorts of things, but he taught us how to seafare, that's for sure. So, you come from a little bit of money, then I would, would guess. That's what they say. I'm not our firstborn child, so I wouldn't know. No, uh, understandable, but you still have something, and some understanding. But I knew there was something in you that I liked. Not just the magic. That's that's been impressive as well. The firstborn all, doesn't always get everything. That's true. <clears throat> but a lot of with, times they do. With the seafaring uh, Smith family, the firstborn got everything. And were you not the firstborn then? Mm-hmm. What what in line are you? I'm secondborn. Well, sometimes the second born is well recognized as well. Now, in our circumstances, it's quite different because I'm also the first born and kind of the second born. <laughs> yeah, and this, I haven't seen my brother in 50 years. Oh, really? Oh, you lucky son of a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rashid. You, know, you love having me around. Hey, I kept you up in that fight multiple times. Oh, yes. Speaking of which, uh, here, and I hand you 19 gold. What, what is this for? I just I just want you to have it. Yeah, okay. Is that my gold from earlier? No. Okay. No, it's my gold from earlier. <laughs> no. But, thank you. Um, I guess I'll take this. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, you don't need to thank me. Thanks. Can we get another bottle of gin, please? 
Yeah, uh, the Chardonnay as well. At this point, the attendant just calmly goes, oh, yes, absolutely. Claps his hands, and uh, two of his attendants who are underneath him walk back in with those bottles almost instantly. They saw a lot of gold, and they're like, they're pretty eager. And they're pouring for you now. <laughs> so always, you're from a merchant class, uh, second in line, haven't seen your brother in 50. How long has it been since you've seen your father? My father's been dead for a little while. Fair enough. Uh, so has your brother inherited the uh, family business? Uh-huh. He sure did. I haven't seen any of my family in a long time. Do you, what, uh, what family do you have, Edouard? I know of a father. He was the one who raised me in my early years. I don't remember much of where we lived. I seem to remember some cult. You may have remembered from earlier on with the spell training. I used some cold, same with it within the sword training. The one that I easily could have won and the cold ruined. I feel like that power is tied to wherever I was from. But I can't get a very big visual. But I do remember my father, from what I know, looked similar to me. At least his hands did. That's all I can really remember. Yes, I've, I've not actually seen your kind before. You're quite different. I don't understand it either. I haven't seen any others of my people either. I envy you a little bit for just remembering that. Remembering what? Your father's hands. I mean, I would say they're warm, but they weren't. They're cold. They, they were very cold. But I do remember the night that he had to leave me. It wasn't for any selfish reason. It was to protect me. And if he hadn't left, I probably wouldn't be here today. But I just wish I had someone there to help me, to help guide me with my powers. And I hope I get to meet him again someday. Zip, what of you? Do you have family? Nope. Anymore? I, I know you were part of a group that didn't treat you very well. We're, uh, we're born into tribes. Uh, nobody has parents. This is kind of a, a clutch. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they're a bunch of chaotic jerks, really. Hold on. God, I see. Yeah, I'm glad you're with us. Yeah, it's been I've grown to out. like all of you. It's been quite interesting to work together, and I think we're on to another journey together. Zerk so, turned blue earlier, kind of just like I'm blue. Yeah, what was that about, Zerk? Hmm. I don't know. There's something about that place. Hmm. Maybe you should spend some time there. If we get a chance. Longer than what we already have. <laughs> Ulmok. Um, have you ever seen... Would... Does... Would Farinder ever... Um, take any suitors? He's looking at you with one eye as he's chucking from a bottle. I go, eh, what you say? Has Ferrander ever taken any suitors? <laughs> you can go ahead and try. Goodness, she's like, not even have emotions or a heart. No, I don't think so. Sounds even more attractive than the usual, so. Oh, I, um. You, okay, I, uh. 
<laughs> I, I didn't I didn't know you it's were I, 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 knew, I knew you were brave that he's slapping you on the shoulder but I didn't know you were you know swinging for fences that's a uh, um uh, that's impressive you know she is sort of you know you're a, a commanding officer above you so maybe you tread carefully there but um it sounds like a disaster waiting to happen so I must encourage it that sounds good just if you ever make a move, you will. Uh, you will let me be there. That would be weird. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like ask her to the dance sort of thing. You like make sure you do it publicly for everyone to see. I'd, I'd. Uh, uh, I think we'd all benefit from looking, seeing your amazing technique. I'm sure you. No, all right. We'll see. No, nothing. <laughs> Nothing will get you a, a first date like uh, point blank shooting somebody in the <laughs> face. <laughs> hey, and baby. Komak just dies laughing at that. Well, I mean, it could be a, it could be a sign of respect then that she would respect you for your your skills. I guess. Uh, so no, just I was just asking. It's it's not fun. I don't know. Oh, honestly, I didn't know you was the uh, romantic type that much that you were actually looking. Speaking of which, uh, Colmock, do you have any uh, lady friends? Um, people hate or... me. Oh, no. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't imagine why people hate you. I smell like an orc. You have such charming personality. Yeah, you're being sarcastic. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> No, I'm a confer confirmed old bachelor. I like it this way. Um, and being here in the city and doing this job is the least amount I've ever had to live in. In the most peaceful environment, wouldn't want to bring a woman in. Uh, no, thank you. Married to his work type of guys. No, married to being alone type of guys. Thank you very much. Um, are we all going to go around and um, confirm our dating status right now? Tuvian? Um, and Tuvian just goes, I'm not answering. Amos, I'd ask you, but you'd probably break my arm. <laughs> uh, what about you, little Zep? Hmm? Got a fancy lady back, lady back home waiting for you. Nope. Well, that was concise. What, are you <laughs> big man? Big one. I mean, the only family got... I've ever had was... My father, so no. You you don't know if there's a possibility of a little of a child or grandchild running out there. No idea. If I find my home, possibly, but I still don't know where my home is. Oh, you've got so much time. Oh, you're so young. You'll get there. No worries. And by this point, they've brought out the venison. They've brought out like the. The big salad, and they have like a, a, a soup that, came, that that comes out first. They're these big, like um, roasted sweet potatoes, just like on giant trays to eat home style. Mm. And uh, Kolmak is like just digging in like an animal. He just go. He, he eats with utensils, but he goes fast. If, you know how when the beast in Beauty and the Beast tries to eat with a fork well, and it doesn't go that well. It's kind of like that, but only no shame. Nice. Um, Tuvi and, and Amos are just like enjoying themselves and chatting. They kind of talk quietly to each other, like mentioning. You can hear them like mention people you don't know about, and they kind of just kind of listen and look around the room and uh, only make side comments to each other. I I say after this uh, we have a little fun and. Play a little game. Does anybody know any any games we could play? I keep hearing about this thing called Rollies, but I don't know anything about it. No. No <laughs> Rollies in my gray cloaks. I don't Never. understand it. Not what? Some people play it, and I don't get it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. What is Rollies? I don't know. I've I've heard of it, but I I it's, I don't I don't know what it, how it works at all. When I was a little orc boy, we used to put people in wagon wheels and roll them down steep hills? I don't oh. think that's what it was. 
I think that's what I think that's what we should do. Yeah. I remember someone died. Sounds fun to me. Avatha, how about you jump in first? Uh, no, I've 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 learned that one before, brother. Mm, fool me once, right? Shame on me. It's okay mm -hmm. if you die. I'll bring you back to life. Avatha, you look particularly rollable, which is funny because you're so skinny. Uh, no, I'm not I particularly like... rollable, and I will not be rolled. I feel like I could cram you into like a perfect circle. Yeah. And just bowl with you. Yeah, I've, I've done Great. it before. <laughs> Alathar, do you like to wrestle? Um, no, that's not really my thing, wrestling. Oh, I'll give it a I'll, try. I bet, I'm sure you would. I, Alathar, I bet you could really go after me. That'd be fun. No, no. no An old man you. like me, you'd win immediately. Oh, probably um, not. At this, he like lunges at you like he's about to jump over the table at you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do um, that. Actually, as he does that, I cast shield too. <laughs> <laughs> and he's patting the sheer shield, laughing, just like carrying on, enjoying himself. Um, and then he starts talking to Amos and Tuvian for a second. And, you know, as the conversation winds away. And they keep bringing more drink. I want to, yeah, I, I think I am going to drink myself into oblivion tonight. Okay. Roll a constitution saving throw. That's a two. <laughs> yeah, you do not eat enough carbohydrates and you are going to forget a lot of things. Wait one second. I'm going to uh I'm going to mute real fast. I don't thought. How about you and I wrestle? Um no. No, you usually win those. Hey, you 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 held up pretty well during that fight lesson earlier. Let, let's go for it, and I slap you on the chest. Rashiel, I'll go for it. No. Sorry, I'm back. Sorry, I'm back. Um, yeah, Rashiel, you're um toasted. No, I equal. Yeah, I'm I'm not, I want to fight my brother. I want to wrestle my brother. I'm not here to. It's not. I don't know. I think that's I, great. You two should have a fist fight. Yeah, I'm gonna punch in the street. I wanna punch Alathar in the right head. now. Okay, roll for attack. Ooh. Dirty twenty. <laughs> roll damage. That's a zero. Zero? Yep. Wait, is your you have a negative character. you have a negative strength? I have a oh well I have a negative one strength yes. And you rolled one damage. I rolled well I didn't roll because I don't get anything for unarmed strike. So it's oh good zero. point yeah yeah. You just like push him with your fist I guess. <laughs> what? Come what on Alatha. What, what? Come on Alatha. I'm not gonna hit you back. I do it again. <laughs> I'll hit him. I really miss with a five. Wow. I just step back. No, seriously, we're not fighting here. Come on. Gonna... No, yeah. I'm not going to do this. Natural 20. Nice. 22. For still zero damage. It's still zero. <laughs> <laughs> we should stop it. So I need to tell mother what's going on here. All right, I'm going to go pee. You do that. And as soon as you turn around, I'm going to push you in the back. Or try to. Watch beer. Yep, A roll 16. for attack. What? A 16? Nope. <laughs> he tries to. <laughs> He just taps him on the back. All right. Yes, I'm going, going pee. I was trying to push you over, but uh, 
I need a brother to do this with. This looks fun. Quite make it. Hey, Guam, you should also punch Alathar. He likes it. That sounds like a good idea, Alathar. Uh, no, no, that's... Uh... No, no. Hey, Guam, you don't ask, you just do it. Uh, 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 but that's, that doesn't seem right. Give him a try. Look at him, he's right there. He is right there, and you're the point. Doesn't seem right to punch him with no, You're not any fun. You've all got a drink more, like your stupid brother. Alright, I'll go for try. And he's going to punch near Alpha and not hit him on purpose. Alright, that was boring. <laughs> Look, we're not just gonna do whatever you want, whenever you want, it, all the time. So they're all chatting, and Alathar, you, um, Tuvian walks around and goes, and just mentions that he has something for you. He's like, let's step out in the hall and wait for your brother to. For me? Uh huh. Oh, um, oh, okay. Uh, I'll be right, right, right back, everyone. Dan, you to step out into the hall. Uh-huh. Uh, what? Are we just waiting for uh, Rashil? Yes, just a moment. I'm afraid it's something he may want to look at ah. first. Okay. So, um, Brayden, are you coming right back? Or are you going to go snoop around? Is Is there anybody in the bathroom with me? Um, yeah, there's, a um, two dwarvish men walking out when you're in there, and there's a human in there washing. There's, there's two men in there washing their hands? Well, there's two dwarves leaving, and then there's a uh -huh. human in there washing his hands. Oh, cool. All right. Well, if it's just me and the, and the human, once the dwarves leave, I'll try to pick his pocket. All right, roll a side hand check. 30, 20. All right, yeah. Oh, bummer, man. You you uh, do a great job. Do, do you want to explain how you pick his pocket? Um, I will... I I am drunk. I'll just... Oh, should that affect your okay. ability? Maybe a disadvantage? Probably. Uh, what? Hello? Now yeah. we can hear you. Hey, all right. Hey. Well, I have to hold it up against my ear like a phone because it's <laughs> charging. <laughs> and uh, putting it down just to see what happens when you... Oh, because you can't... Can you go on, like, speaker or anything? Because I'm running off the phone, too. Oh, Sweet. Yep, I can. Yep, there you go. Okay. Yeah, speak right as well. Sorry, I don't know what you guys talked about for the last three minutes, but nothing uh, important. I am going to the pisser, and now I'm trying to pick a guy's pocket. He tried to fight me too. <laughs> like, like you do. Like just, you do. I didn't want to fight. Sorry, I'm reading up. I forgot. There's it's really detailed about how you get drunk. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I think I have rules somewhere. No, but there might be Pathfinder rules. What What are so, the rules about? Also, I have several uh, game of chance games that I had designed for the other campaign. So uh, one of these times, Alathar might bust one of them out. So it's interesting. There, um, um, so wait. So you are. Um, I don't really like these rules because you keep, like. Yeah, all they really do they get they get you to. Yeah, I'm I'm going to modify this for another game. I've looked at this before and I realized I, I think it could be a lot more fun than what they have. Um, yeah. So you have liquid courage right now. 
Um, yeah. For, let's see, we're going to have it for a certain amount of time. Um, you, um, yeah, you're pretty toasted. Maybe you won't remember everything. You have advantage on charisma skill checks and charisma ability checks. Um, and uh, advantage on saving throws against fear, as well as five temporary hit points. Um, you have dis- dis- disadvantage on wisdom and dexterity saving throws. Okay. And disadvantage on intelligence and wisdom ability check. So your dexterity checks are not impaired. Okay. So you're fine. I'm going to cool. go with their ruling right now, but I want to play with that for our next time. I read this before, and I was like, oh, that's good. I actually don't like it now. So go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, you um, tell me how you pick his pocket. Uh, I'll... I'm I'm picturing I walk in and he's to my left, kind of washing his hands and whatever, and I'll just kind of stumble over and kind of run over. So he kind of has to bend over the sink as he's doing this, and I don't pick his pocket then, um, but I'll I'll maybe kind of slap some water on him. So I'm, oh oh sorry sorry, and I'll try to help him clean up. And dry off. And as I'm drying it off, I'll I'll pick his pocket. All right. What pocket are you going? Like inside cloak pocket, like pants I'm pocket? I'm thinking inside cloak pocket, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty easy. And you did a dirty 20 was your t- or 21. Uh dirty 20. As you do that, he's just stop. That it's I it's it's fine. Stop. And he's totally distracted by you just rubbing his face with a towel. And I'm um, acting drunk too, so yeah. Um and you uh, you find there's a small leather booklet that you grab, and you find and you feel a, a a small coin purse that you grab as well. Cool. 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 So sorry, I I I just really have to see a guy about a horse. Uh, fine, fine. Ex- excuse you. He has like a viceroy facial hair, like just a tiny little spit catcher and mustache. It's like waxed to perfection. He has slicked black, slicked back black hair. He's very young. Um, he's uh, he's wearing like a light, smaller cloak, and then just like a really fine silk tunic and silk pants underneath, and uh, some uh, like very soft looking boots. I, 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 I accept your apology. Please stop. Thank do you, you, sir. Do you want to see a guy? Thank you. Home? Thank you, sir. And he's walking he's, out the door. Uh, all right. Okay. And I'll go pee. Okay. Cool. Do you go right back after that? Yep. Okay. As you go back, and I um, don't wash my hands. Nice. What and, did you uh, say? I don't <laughs> but... wash my hands. <laughs> That's um, on character. Now you you turn the corner and you see down the hallway. So like the hallways are like they're all like ledges looking back over into the main room. Like you're walking along rooms onto your left. On the right is railing, and you're looking down two floors, down to a, a big common area. And you see out by the sliding door, out in the, um, you see Tuvian and just standing there, kind of looking around, and Alathar looking a little confused. Tuvian s- spots you and goes, "Ah, there you are. Broke the seal, did you?" Alathar, did you get in trouble? <laughs> No, not at all. Looks like you no. did. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, okay. And I'll pull out the billfold that I picked from his from the guy's pocket. All oh, right. Wait. And wait, what is that? <laughs> uh, well, it's wait. You don't know? No. It's it's my money. It's don't what what happened? <laughs> did you steal that? Are you, do you have sticky fingers when you drink? No, but I have stinky fingers. I didn't wash my hands. That's, that's great. So I'm going to, I'm about, I'm about to hand you something and I don't want it back. And he hands you an envelope with a seal on the back. Um, you see the seal and it's like a aquamarine green ink. And Rashil, you recognize it immediately. It actually sends like a, the smell of the, of the wax is actually like an amazing intense memory. And even in your drunken state, you know exactly that that's your mother's emblem. 
and the letter is opened. Um, Braden, check your inbox. Do I see this? Um, he was kind of keeping it hidden, and he hands you see it, and he looks he looks to you while Braden while uh, Brashiel's reading. I'm sorry for this. I'm very sorry for the secrecy. You see, this is uh, first of all concerning directly your. I thought it'd be best if he read it to you. When you see the contents, perhaps you'll understand. Have you had contact with your parents? Uh, no. We've been quite busy with things. It's not really been a super long time, but... Um, you, I you must, are, oh, yes, I understand. I've just you double, kept us double quite checked. Busy. Oh, yes, as we need to. There's a war beginning. Right. But, yes, no, just, just, just wondering. You'll see that. I'm sure you'll see the content of the letter momentarily. Uh, yeah. Rashid, uh, are you quite all right? I am all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think, I think we should enjoy the night. Um, are you not going to tell me what? It's... Anatha, this is nothing. It's let, let's let's talk in the morning. It's is is mother all right? Oh yeah, yeah, mother fine. Mother's fine. Okay. Now, Rashil, I do think, may I give you advice? This is something that could be remedied quite easily. Not to pry into your personal matters, but if you need help sending any messages back, you just let me know. So Thank you. Thank you, Tuvian. I, I appreciate and then that. Tuvian kind of does a little head nod and walks back into... He, he brings me out here, hands you something, and says nothing to me. Now I'm left in the dark. Yeah, well, yes, I, I, after reading this, it is something that, that, uh, mother wants an update on us, and she would like a message, but. Oh, that's fine. There is more to it that I would like to discuss with you in the morning when we are all, uh, when we have our, our game faces on. If you will, uh, you, in, you mean when your head is clear and you're not drunk off your ass? When in Rome, say la vie, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> que Sarah, I don't know. Yes, right. sure. You're trying Anything. to think. Yes. yes, never mind. I'm sure your head is not very clear right now. I think your head is not clear. See, if you actually were not drunk, you would come back with a better comeback than that. If you were not drunk, you would come up with a better comeback than that. Exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> Maybe you should just go and continue to drink. That sounds like a great idea. Yes, uh, I will carry you back. <laughs> well, when you uh, follow somebody... We, oh, uh, you know what? Actually, I might not be strong enough, but I bet Iguam would be strong enough to carry you back. I don't need anyone to, to carry me back. Maybe I'll make him cradle you like a little baby. Did I hear my nice. <laughs> That's so nice. We'll I see. You, I'll walk back in. Can I go out and carry Rushiel in? Uh, I I don't think you you hear any of that. They're they're sitting uh, outside the door, but the common drunk space, yet. their space they're in is uh, uh um, separate. yeah. You guys walk back in, and Kolmok has uh, done like an old man nap, where his like chin is on his chest. <laughs> he's he's, snor he's snoring, but his uh his back is like somehow perfectly straight, sitting on this cushion. He's fine. And Amos is eating some fruit and drinking and leaning on the table, really just like. Hanging out alone, she actually pulls out like this, these papers, and she's reading some sort of publication to herself, just doing her own thing. I'm going to stumble into Colmac and try to pick his pocket. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, roll sleight of hand. Seventeen. Yeah. All right. Um, you. What pocket are you trying to get to? Uh, inside, like, vest or cloak. All right, it's awkward because his back is to you. So you have to reach over him. Yep. 
Um, and you wrote a 17 for sleight of hand. Yep. Does anyone have a passive perception all the way up to 17? No, but how, how long after him walking, walking in do I see him go over that direction? Oh, he, I mean, he'd have to do, yeah, he'd have to do it pretty immediately. Can I do an active perception knowing what he's been up to? You know what? Fair enough. Sorry, Rishio. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have no. to apologize. Um. <sighs> oh, hey. I hope you're not just giving up on the night. Oh, you're talking to Colmock? Yeah. <laughs> he starts drinking again. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, and you actually grabbed like um some folded up papers. Cool. They're in my pocket. Yep. Cool. And uh Colmock is drinking and dozing off and uh Tuvian um actually steps outside for a minute and, and then Amos walks in and out and talking to him, leaning on the railing. You guys are kind of alone. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm ready to call it a night. Oh, come on. I, I, have, I have something I need to, to think about. So, is, is, is there a girl? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Of course there's not. I'm not surprised by that. Zerf, are you in for a drink? Wait, who did you talk to? Zerp. Oh. Go ahead, Zerp. We can't hear you, Eric. Sorry, I was on mute. I was on mute. No, Zerp's snoring. <laughs> All way. Looks like he's already ready. Uh. That's okay. Thanks. Iguan. <laughs> I want to think about where I'm from more deeply. I think going to sleep would be the best course of action. I, so, I, got, uh, I got knocked out twice today, Rashiel. Uh, so did Rashiel. Well, no, I guess it was only once. That's true. But thanks Rashiel's getting you. knocked out the second time right now. All right. Sounds like I'm. Gonna be hitting on the ladies by myself. As you say that, Coma goes ah, after party, after party. Follow me. Yes, yes. Who's coming? Don't stay out too late, party animals. Who's coming? Who's coming? This but guy and this guy. All right. Oh, just me and you. Feel. That's it's just you. It's you and me. Yeah. Just me and just me and Gerard Way. Get your eyeliner. We're going emo tonight. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's get out of here. And he starts, um, Tuvian Amos, go home. I don't want to look at you anymore. And he's, he's, he's pretty drunk and he's uh, kind of stumbling around and but he's still walking. Come on. The rest of you go home. You'll get Iguam, your better quarters tomorrow. Iguam, could you carry Zerp back? Uh, sure. He seems already out. Yeah, I can carry him. He's not too heavy. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> All right, I'm so gonna... the, rest, the rest of you are going back to the barracks? Yes, sir. Ooh, I have my own room. Right. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. So the others, all the rest of you, I guess, Olway, you still have your own and then Zerp and Iguan, you guys could make it back. I mean, it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Walk through the, like, check out, like, walk back there. It's not very long. Um, you get back to your, your spot. Um, Kolmok is just walking in front of you, talk, kind of talking about everything and just yelling about the city and about taxes and just being, being a grouchy old man. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah, like the, the amount of money they spend on these three. 
<laughs> to look exactly the same. Just ridiculous. The, the, the wasted. They could go to defense. Defense could get the money for this part of the city. He's just ridiculous. And he's walking back to the peninsula. Are you going to follow him, Michelle? Yep. Yeah, he's pretty... Do- oh. <clears throat> he's kind of sobering up in the night air. Um, it's it's August now, but so the nights are relatively dry. Um, but it's still pretty hot. And uh, he uh, starts walking in the streets you recognize, and he turns a corner and starts walking right to the door. Fate's fool. Yes. And he uh, goes inside there, and just there's a it's a there's a crowd in there. It's a, it's a Wednesday night actually, but there's like a lot of people in there tonight. It's like the bar's full, everybody's standing around. And you hear him scream, Fina! And everybody stops. This giant, this old, half, like, 60-year-old half-orc just leaned in and was screamed, like, drool, eating it as loud as he could. Ruby! Martha! <laughs> you hear behind the, the bar. That drunk idiot. <laughs> I'm kicking him out tonight. No, you're not! And you see him go straight to the bar, and he's leaning over the bar. Literally, people move out of his way and just give him their stool. Um, and he's just he's just talking. All right, Enid, I got this one here. I'm sure you know I'm in trouble, and I need some fiery liquid right now. Let's do it. We need right. two two of the of the liquids that are fire. The fire liquid. You see one of the um. So of of the three old ladies who run Fate's Fool. Um, two of them look identical, and they look like they're humans, and the last one uh, looks identical, but is a halfling. And the halfling walks away, just like muttering angrily, and one of the humans stays and starts pouring some very dark red liquor into little glasses. I would call the police on you, but that's you. You're that's a right. To, you're a menace to society, Call Mark, and she puts um, two shots in front of you and walks away with the bottle. With the liquor bottle. And Komak picks it up and he like says, Cheers! And he like Cheers. pours half pours half of it out. And Let's go. He, he just throws it back. <laughs> that stuff tastes terrible. This is fun. Oh, this is fun. Oh. oh. So... Uh, what kind of daddy issues do you have? Oh. Oh. Um. So you 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 want to talk? Oh, you want to talk about to uh, you would not ask a half orc about his father? <laughs> oh, you're stupid. <laughs> you know how, no. how half orcs get their father? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> they rape uh, the women and leave them alone with a boy who's half monster, half human. That's how you get a dad or a half-orc man like me. He, he reaches over and grabs the liquor bottle and pours more and gives himself a shot of something random. So that went well. Uh, you, you're, you're the one asking. I don't mind talking about it. I've had a river of li- liquor, so I, I don't, I don't mind. What Can are your I... daddy? What are your daddy issues? I don't have any. What were you gonna ask? I do, I don't have any. I don't know. Oh, I thought you were gonna ask something as a out of character. Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay, never mind. Uh, you don't have any daddy issues. You, you love your father. What? what you, he hasn't come to visit you on your field trip here to Neverwinter, has he? No. Is he still alive? Uh, would I... Do you mind? Just for fun. Would I punch <laughs> you in the face? <laughs> yeah, I'd, le- I'd really like that, actually. All right. Go ahead. Thwack! For uh, <laughs> six, 16. <laughs> the last woman that I dated. Punch me every day harder than. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to find a little halfling princess for you, won't we? Oh, it's all right. Not... No, that's okay, Fumbelina. You have other talent. Go, oh, my goodness. I I couldn't feel that if I was sober. 
Well, I yes, I I'm not even sure I felt felt it. Yeah, they, you shouldn't have. You probably <laughs> broke your wrist on my ugly orc, orc face because it's it's like a we got like mud in our veins. Earth and mm-hmm. uh, 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 uh. no, I'm fine. We're like <laughs> we're not like even flesh and the blood. <laughs> But is your, you wait? No, is your father dead? Were you is just about alive? to throw up? Were you were you just about to throw up? I was. I have a stammer, and it's not nice to bring it up. Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm fine. I don't throw up. I just drink it back. That's all. It's all right. Um, the no is your is your you got a it's a it's a gift to have a. Do you have that gift, or has have you learned the other hard and of losing him? Well, I don't uh, know. Did you ever? Did you ever have him? I have a gift. I want to give to you, Como. I'm um, drunk, but I understand you're avoiding my questions. Well, this is no, but this is this. This is really going to come from the heart. It's really going to come from the heart. Oh, but I want it just for you. I got it just for you. Hold on, just wait. Reach into my pocket and I pull out my finger and I give him the finger. Uh, I, I'm going to bite it. He's going to try to bite your finger. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me get my phone. <laughs> you can get some stats out for that one. <laughs> let me get my phone because this needs to be recorded. I hope it's a 20. I hope I lose a finger. <laughs> yep. Check out the text. Nice. Yep. He just chomps down on your finger with his incisors. Um, I'm going to say he does... Uh, where's my D4? Two points of damage. Oh, cool. He probably broke it, too. Yeah! Oh. Yeah. Daddy issues. And then Daddy. he falls. He falls to the floor after he says daddy issues. He just passes up. No, he's, he's like stumbling to stand back up. Is he ready to go home now? I... I don't live with you. Let's go get a booth. You want to sleep I want, in the booth? I want a pancake. And he's stum- he's stumbling backwards to go get to go find like a, an open booth, but it's pretty crowded. He's going into the Yeah, let's get pancakes. And he, he uh, starts talking. You, you if, are you following him? Yeah. He goes over to a booth. Excuse me. Uh, um, can you all leave? And there's three people sitting in a booth, and they're like, "We're si- we're si- sitting here." I think it's um. He's, he said, "Get up!" He said, "Get he, up and go." I no, I didn't. I said to be. Can you please leave? No, but, oh, no. He, he meant what he meant. Uh, you gotta read the read the signs. He says, "Get up uh, and go." Uh, uh, He's gonna throw up on you. He's gonna throw up uh, on you. I would never throw up on the lady, and it's three it's three dudes in the booth. I would never throw up on the lady. No. And they <laughs> say, okay, that's fine. And they, they all leave. And Komak sits down in the booth, just collapse. Uh, I don't like being drunk. This is well, bad. I'm never doing this again. That's what we always say. I never say that. Pancakes! <laughs> Keep yelling pancakes, it, it might work. Pancakes? 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 And you just hear, you just hear like this, this, you see this like tray like kind of clanking along and you just see this little tiny face. Come back. I'll get you for this. I'll get you for this. Pan- pancakes? You have. Gold. I have gold. I have gold. And pancakes. Wait. Wait patiently. And the halfling owner runs away with a big 
tray of dishes she has. She's just <laughs> fuming. So are you not going to tell me anything about your, your thing? My, my, I mean, I can tell you about it. I don't know if you really want to find out about it, but I'll, I mean, it's, it's like six inches. Uh, I'm so sorry. Is that, that's, that's small for an elf, right? Well, no, no, it's quite large for, for an elf, if you ask me. Uh, uh, wait, what are we talking about? You asked about my thing, and I told you about my No, thing. about your daddy issues. Oh, yes. Uh, well, it's a little... Um, I mean, I'll be honest. You you seem like... This is a me thing to say. You seem like the angry type because daddy left. No. 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 Are you just angry because daddy's so nice? Yep, that's that's it. I hate you. My daddy was so nice that I couldn't stand it anymore, and I got angry. That's great assessment. Is that why you wanted to become a dirty cop too? Yep, you you figured me out, Cormac. I'm I'm. I'm a detective. Mm. And you guys hang out for a while longer. Um, do you, are you are, are you gonna are you have anything specific you want to talk to him about or do you want to? Nope. Okay, just hanging out. Nope. Um, he he he. You guys get pancakes. They're not very lovingly made, but they do have syrup on them. Um, and then he starts moving kind of east into the city, and uh, you're moving west now back to. The barracks. Um, let's go to Alathar. Um, Alathar, you go to bed, and you're all alone in the room. Right. So before I go to sleep, I uh, Alathar reaches into his pack and pulls out the the sword hilt and looks at that again, and uh, begins kind of just talking to it. All right. What are you? Ever since I got you, things have changed. I feel different. I feel like I'm supposed to do something with you, but I don't know what. So, anything? And he just sits there and kind of waits for a while. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Where'd my character sheet go? All right. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, you feel this intensity. You've never spoken to an inanimate object. Yeah, that's true. Never spoken oh. to an in, into an inanimate object before. Um, and you feel strange, like you can imagine its mind talking back to you. And then about 30 seconds later, you realize staring at an old hilt, you st I lose you. I'm just staring at an old hilt. Yeah, and nothing happens. Okay. <sighs> I don't understand. Somebody wanted me to see this and to take it, and then nothing. Okay. All right. He puts it back in the bag. All right. And goes to sleep. You fall asleep very, very quickly. Maybe it's the alcohol, maybe it's the stress and the trauma of the day. But you immediately start to feel a familiar, creepy presence. 
weighing on your mind. Mm -hmm. And you have the same kind of dream you do with a bad virus, terrible fever. And you feel an intense heat. The kind of dream that lasts a long time. And then you see the star and you wake up. You saw it in your dream, the six pointed star. And you feel the stranger. You feel that he's nearby. The same one that was spoke that spoke to Alathar before. You feel that presence again. And do I, uh, Alathar will close his eyes again and see if he sees the star. It almost startles you. It looks like the star is floating right in front of your face. It starts to move backwards towards the door of your bed. Open my eyes and start to walk towards the door and then at the, at the door, close the eyes again. It moves out of your the, the small chamber connecting your bedrooms and out into. I'll open up the door and walk out. Uh, open eyes, oh, walk out the door, then close my eyes as soon as I come out. You're glad that you open your eyes because you step out the door. And as soon as you step out of the door, the side of the building is. The side of the building is what? The building that you're inside a hallway that's like on the the wall you would be looking out of barracks door would be the mm-hmm. exterior wall of the building. But there's just a giant piece of the building crumbled to the ground. And you see by the light of a full moon, the southern wall of Neverwinter broken and crumbled and many. And the great plains south of the peninsula, overgrown with thicket and new trees in the path, decades old. But the walkway of the hallway is still there. Hmm. He'll close his eyes once more. As soon as you do, the star was right in front of you, and it, as normal, like I did last time, goes to the left, down what was the hallway, but now is almost like walking on the roof of the building. And you have to, and it's hard because you realize there's rubble in what was once just a passageway. I'll continue to follow and. With his eyes open at times, so, so he can okay. see. Yeah, with your eyes open, it's like rough terrain, essentially, but like you can crawl over everything as long as you're going careful. And you're dressed, you're dressed for sleep, but like you see all the other rooms as you pass them, the doors are missing, and everything is dusty and stuff. What is and this? You, and you get to the hallway, close your eyes again, and down the stairs you see the star moving more quickly. And the stairs are relatively intact, covered in dust and some rubble, and you dart down the stairs. And that's when you open your eyes again, finding the star moving out into the columns that hold up the center of the building, sort of like the Parthenon. But you open your eyes, and the Hall of Justice is destroyed. Hmm. What's just happened? It's, it's a pile of columns. The, the verge has grown over some of them. Stale heat hangs in the air. The smell of fire, but there's no light except the moon. And then you see it. The cloaked, hunched figure bobbing its head from side. Standing in an open space that once was a city square, but now is barely cobblestone still. And when you make 
when you turn your head to see it down the stairs, maybe a hundred yards away, the being starts to run north. Wait, come back. I'll chase after him. You chase after him and you get all the way to what should be one of the bridges. But the bridge is gone. And so is the river. And you notice the being went down the side and ran down what is now a hill down the dry bed of the river. And you follow him down and then back up. Are you following him as far as he goes? You follow him down and what was was down. It's just a a bare riverbed. And you can see on both sides there's no water down there. You have to clamber back up a steep hill to get up to the other side. And as you're exhausted and breathing really heavy, you go up to the other side of the steep hill and you see he's waiting there and then darts forward again. Keep still going north out of the peninsula district. You can see to your left, there was, there's a mound that now just looks like a hill, burial mound, where once castle never stood. And there are the shadows of big buildings, but there's not much left in the city. Really just larger towers, half fallen, and the skeleton of a wall in all directions. So many and you, questions. And you keep running, and you don't see a living thing other than some broken-looking uh, brown plants trying to grow. going on here and you turn a corner around some rubble and the figure has stopped and is looking in your direction but he's point but he's pointing ahead of him he's pointing ahead towards a black pitch black lake of water still perfectly still and reflecting no light. And he begins to bob its head and say, show, show it to him. Show him the way. I said that last time, but... but show it, show it. He, he walks up to you, and his, his strange hand that feels like it doesn't have fingers starts, like, kind of bending around, bending around your arm and pulling you and pointing out on the lake. Uh, sh- sh- show, show it to him. Show, show him the way. What are you? Say something more. There's so many it's... snow. You, you sent it... me towards this, this sword, and, and I don't understand. It, it pauses, and oh, you notice now? It, like, it lifts its head up. And you notice it's, it has a long snout. Underneath its cloak. And it removes the cloak from its face. And you see a long black beak. And then a ghastly image of a bird with no feathers, just red, wounded eyes looking back at you. Uh, show, show it to him. Show me what? Show him the way. And he points so, out so on what? the black lake. What'd you say? You want, you want me to go in the water? Um, you look out on the lake, and it's very, very still. But you can you see something. Roll a perception check. Five. You, there's something out on the lake. There's something out there. <laughs> he, he points across the lake. He goes, uh, uh, the way. And he points to the lake. This is the way? The, uh, the, the, the way. All right. I mean, last time I didn't get hurt. I did something that I've never done before, but... And you're kind of creepy, to be honest. I mean, everything about you is scary. I don't understand why I even follow you. 
be staring deeply into your eyes and not saying anything. I, I don't even think this is real. I mean, look at what's going on around here. But so, uh, fine, I will, I will go that way, and I will move forward towards the lake. Okay, when you, you're about 10 feet from it. When you get to the water, what do you do? I will put one foot in. You like, put your foot... You very put your foot. gingerly. There's a little bit of give, but you don't break through. Interesting. So you put his whole weight on, onto it. And it supports you. Okay. And I'll continue out where I think I saw something. You kind of have to go a little bit north to the east, out way to the middle. But you begin to walk, and you're walking on, it looks like pitch black liquid. And, and it, it like has a, a texture almost, but it's slick, and it gives with your weight. But it doesn't leave any footprints. But it holds your weight. This is strange. Continues on the path towards what he was. You get you get closer, and very quickly you unmistakably recognize the thing out there is small. Um, it's a human figure out in the middle of the lake. Small. Not like halfling small, but not large or intimidating. But the figure's relatively black. Hello? You get closer and you can tell that the figure has long black hair. You get about 20 yards away and the figure turns and you can tell by the light of the full moon. It's a woman in a black dress. And she begins walking towards you. Hello. What, what is this place? What? Who are you? What is going on? I I have, the woman speaks. I have spent a very long time waiting for Alathar Greylock to come here. What is I, Alatha Greylock? And finally you come. I see you found it. What? Found who? What? What Show it to me. Show you what? Show me the hilt of your blade. Okay. He rummages through his stuff and pulls the hilt out. This uh, hey, the hilt, don't... the hilt, the hilt is like for like what would look like kind of a broadsword. It's maybe you could wield it in a single hand, but it's it's rather large and um, pretty simple. It has a like a swirling pattern on it. And, um, just looks like an old hilt. I took this from a grave. I don't do that kind of stuff. Why? Why? I don't understand. It's just an old hilt. It's yours. This is the sword of the great Alathar Greylock. I am Alathar Greylock, and I am not really great. No. You are not. Not yet. Well, thank you. But you will be very soon. Oh, at, least the, at least you'll become the Alathar that history needs you to be. I do not understand. I'll be honest, Alathar. I have dreaded meeting you. Why? There's nothing in history like you. What do you mean? History's full of repeating things. 
and even something as small and insignificant as you. In the great scheme of things, originality is consistency is much safer. And you are balanced, Alifar, as no one's been balanced before. And ironically, what should be such a gift piece The weave itself is moving around. This whole world doesn't know what to do with a creature like Aleph Rayla. I wonder if the other worlds would know what to do with you either. Worlds, balance. I mean, I know I was sent, uh, chosen by AO to continue balance and find balance and maintain balance, but for all honesty, I haven't really done much yet you're right that's why you're not yourself not yet shall we begin yes i i guess i made that hilt Alf. who are i you? i am one who owes your god And I'm here to fulfill what I what I have owed him. All right. Dip it beneath the water. Right. I guess it won't harm anything. He does so. You begin to put your hand down, and you're trying to push it, the hilt into the wall, the strange surface you're on. It doesn't seem to really be working. It doesn't give. Your goodness, Alathar, comes from a long line. But your destiny has nothing to do with a revelation. You are for the future. And suddenly, the hilt pushes underneath, and so does your arm. But you have not seen it yet. Except in small parts of this. And you pull the hilt out, and the strange black liquid beneath you pulls at the bait at the um end of the hilt. And you're pulling with all your might, and some of it comes off and forms into the strange blob coming up from the hilt of the sword. And the woman takes out her hand. Hold still. And all the blackness solidifies into a sharp edge. And she pricks her middle finger. And suddenly a flame drops from her finger. And the surface of the liquid you're on catches fire in all directions and suddenly the cool light of the moon by the smell of burning oil everywhere all over you the heat is intense not are you doing and the, the woman looks at you you have the ballot but beware the fire And suddenly everything goes black, and you're falling, no. and, and you splash, and you're underwater, and you uh, push your head up, and you get, a back, you get above the surface, and you look around, and you're in a large body of water, and the lights of the city can be seen in some directions, they're far away, but north and south, they're relatively close. Does it look like I'm back in the present time? It looks like the city. The smell of burning everywhere is uh, is gone. Um, 
and like you're just you have and you look and in your hand is now a black blade a, bl- a blade of that feels like a hard metal like stone that doesn't shine any light and you're struggling to keep your head above the water um as soon as that happens always You're having a deep, peaceful sleep. It's soft in your mind. I think Jacoby might be having a deep, peaceful sleep. Is oh, he what? <laughs> Jacoby, you here? Yep. In a deep sleep, suddenly, your mind fills with flame. Mine? Yes, your mind fills with flame. And then that flame is extinguished with a singeing sound, like Mm. a blacksmith putting a hot end of steel below water. And you see it. You see it. A six-pointed pendant. Mm. Equal on all sides, shaped like a six-pointed star, intricate, woven, Looks like blown glass made of ruby. Dotted with red pearl. And you hear the word your mind. See. And you wake up. We're shield. You walk into the barracks and you open the door. And Alifar, his stuff is there, and his arm, and his most of his clothing's there, but he's not there. Hmm. And right then, you hear in always room, you hear something stirring. You hear someone gasp. I I rush over there. Okay, you knock on the door. You just go in. I'll just go in. Okay. Oh wait, you just woke up from from what you saw. Okay. And um, Rashiel just burst into your room. Uh, good evening, Rashiel. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Doing good. Oh, all right. Yeah, sorry. I'll leave. You go back to my room. Okay. What do you do in your room? I'll just crawl into my bed. Okay. Go to sleep. Alif- Alifar, you're in the middle of a lake. <laughs> Gonna start swimming. All right. It, uh, you, you kind of have to take your time because you're trying not to lose the sword, but you're exhausted. Yep. And you get to the side, and you're on a, you have to kind of crawl up on a walkway. There's like a, the side isn't a beach. It immediately has like a, uh, like a, a riverfront has a, a stone walk, and you have to climb over like a fence. And you fall down below a, a burning street light, and you hear, Hey, hey, who goes there? And these two guards run up to you. Stop right there. What were you doing in the lake? I don't know. I think sleepwalking. Why do you have a... What, sir, why are you armed? And they draw their weapon. I don't know where this came from. Where do you come from? The, the barracks. So we're going to have to take that weapon. Um, wait, why? You, you're going you're, to... You're, so are you intoxicated? I might have had some to drink last night. We need There's, to escort you home. Show us where, where home is. Yeah, sir, I need, sir, I need to hold that blade as we, t- as we escort you home. Hand that to me, please. I would prefer not to let go of it. Sir, you need to hand me that blade right now. Well, is it illegal for someone to carry a weapon in here? It is illegal to be entering the lake at night and be in the, in the lake district at this time. The park is closed. You, need, you are not supposed to be here. You're trespassing on the city. Please, sir, please hand me the weapon right now. I cannot. I, I, I don't feel like I should let this go. It's very special to me. Is that yours? 
Yes, it is mine. The other one goes, it's okay, son. Let's just let him have it. Okay, sir, walk ahead of us. Escort uh, yes. us back to your residence. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't fully remember how to get back to the barracks. Uh, um, the, the barracks? The Hall of Justice, you mean? Yes, yes, that's, that's the one. You would... Okay, well, we'll direct. They start directing you, but they're making you walk in front of them, and they have their swords drawn. And they get to a point that I'm familiar. (laughs) Yeah, you get to the bottom of the Lake District, and you're by one of the bridges leading back and forth, and leads south to the peninsula. Um, you get down there, and um, uh, and now at this point, you can yourself back and go back to the um Hall of Justice. I remember the way now. I will continue on. Thank you. No, no, uh, sir. We're escorting you back. No worries. You, you, you are welcome to do that uh, if you feel so inclined. And uh, they escort you back to the front of the Hall of Justice. And there's plenty of lights and there's guards waiting out front all night long. They, they stop and they ask about you and the guard knows who you are. Um, he's seen you training with the Grey Cloaks and he says, yeah, you have this. He does it and they just let it go and they look kind of frustrated, but they start Thank you. Uh, sorry to have caused such yeah. trouble. They don't respond. Uh, yeah, they seem kind of nice. Anyways, um, thank you for uh, validating my presence here and uh, appreciate it. So, soldier, you need to be in bed. I'll flip that guard a gold coin. Well, I probably don't have a gold coin on me. Uh, you don't. I'll, be like, uh, I'll get you in the morning. Private, get to bed. Yes, sir. And I'll head back to the to the barrack to our rooms. All right, you get back there, and uh, the doors are all closed. And um, you open the door to see where Rashil is, and he is out. He is gone to Dreamland. Uh, eh, we'll talk in the morning. And I will go to sleep, but I I'm gonna like hold on to the sword. You're holding on to the sword. Well, maybe not. Not. Maybe not directly so I don't cut myself, but like holding it somewhere near me. Yeah. All right. And you fall asleep really easily. All right. And then um, the next day, you guys all wake up to a knock on your door and a bright eyed, bushy tailed Kolmak is. Good morning. Get up. Get dressed. It's time to go. Come on. All of you. All right. way. All way. Get up. That, uh, okay. I'm okay. coming. That's right, big man. You too. Where's the little one? Is he Zerp. gone? Zerp, you here? Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh. I'll get up, but I'm not getting dressed. I, oh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Get ready. He waits for y'all to get ready, and he... Um, outside in the hallway are Tuvian and Amos. And they uh, instead lead you to a set of stairs that go up even higher than where the uh, roof in the building. And it leads down a couple of like hallways, and he goes up to uh, a ladder that leads through in through the ceiling and you climb up there and in the light of the morning you are now on top of the hall of justice down in the long straight part that is um supported by all the columns and you can see behind you the huge blue dome made of that strange stone shining bright in the morning sun I'm just carrying the sword with me the whole time, too. All right. You get up there. He tells you, all of you line up. And you can tell he's actually dressed in plate mail. He has on a really nice blue cloak. His hair is all slicked back. He's dressed in the nines. So is uh, Tuvian. So is Amos. And he stands there in front of you. 
And he's standing to the east, and the sunlight is right behind him. What were you about to say, Braden? I feel like I should have taken a shower this morning. <laughs> yeah, we all feel that way about you. Too late now, we're here. So he stands and he says, it's time we made this official. We can get and suddenly, our he takes off his cloak and he turns it around inside out. And it does that same thing where it like bends the light behind him. But this time, he actually pulls it closed and he pulls through the cloak. He pulls the hood down. And he completely disappears. As he stands still in this giant cloak for a giant being, the sunlight starts to bend around him strangely until, as he stands there still, he's gone. But you hear his voice begin to speak. It has been hundreds of years since the last gods of Neverwinter wore cloak gray by the light of day. Many were their deeds, many were their victories, many were their follies. But a promise was made from the beginning of our The Grey Cloaks would. To defend the peoples of this city, their freedom, their justice, and their future. I call you now defend and uphold these walls to wear this man in a manner worthy of it from this day until midwinter by the light of the three stars by neverwinter's name do you take this oath i i do i do mm-hmm Little one, what? You have yep. to say something. Mm-hmm. No, yep, yep. <laughs> Remind me, we're, we're getting paid for this, right? <sighs> Way to He's ruin still... the moment. He's still invisible. Then disappear before and begin your service. And he throws off his hood and he reaches behind him in his bag and he pulls out these several blue cloaks and he hand and he hands them to uh he hands them to each of you and they're tailored to be your so on the outside it looks like a nice thick like cotton cloak like really really well made and it has the emblem of neverwinter of the three stars on it in the middle of a silver circle three silver stars four pointed stars um and if you just look at it from the inside, it looks like the inside is black. But if you turn it inside out, it has the same effect. Hmm. But it's blue, you said? The cloaks yes. are blue. The outside, so you basically can reverse it. You can reverse the cloak to look like a normal cloak that a guard or an officer of Neverwinter would wear. Or you can turn it inside out and become invisible. Oh, that just picks up on the blue. I thought you said they were gray cloaks, not blue cloaks. I thought the same. Gray cloaks. Did you not notice me turning invisible? I turned <laughs> invisible in front of you. Gray cloaks <laughs> is an expression. But it blue means a cloak that makes you invisible. They have. You need to look like normal people here. You need to look like you work for the city, and you only reveal uh, what you do. It is a secret. Sorry, my, you my only sad. you only tell people what you truly do. Now, yes, once long ago they wore gray clothes, but in our great tradition, a long time ago, these were developed, and this became the gray we, uh, the, the gray that makes us disappear. It's not literal. You really thought people wore gray cloaks? Gray gray's the nickname of this material. It's only made here. What's well, that can't be true. <laughs> well, something similar is made elsewhere, I'm sure. But this version is only made here. Do you want to, do you want to, do you want to give it back? No, no, back, no. no. I'm no. sorry, it's not no. gray enough. 
So, no, I just uh, so. How do we do the thing you just did? Do we just we reach in on? And he starts just reaching in and trying to pull it. Big just one turns it inside out. And... Turn it inside out. Pull it around yourself and stand still. Am I invisible now? Are you doing it right? Or are you doing it wrong? I have no idea. <laughs> he tries to do it right. You try, but your hands are sticking out of the cloak a little bit. And you're, like, moving too much. So, like, it's obvious someone's there. It just looks like they're, like, weirdly, like, like it looks like the cloak. Because you're shifting too much, and you're not letting yourself stand perfectly still. You can see the shape of you. I'll I'll throw it around myself as well to try to be invisible, but I'm actually gonna try to sneak like five ten feet to my right. Okay. And see if, if it that, like if you can see it. Komak says, Rashil, we can still see you. It gives you plenty of cover while you move, but doesn't make you invisible. Only when you're standing still. That's. Quite impressive, still. Do do you not like it? I can take it back. No, no, no. I like it. I like it. It's very nice. Does you know, it come I, out I, red? I, the material. I mean, the material could be a little bit more silky or something, but I do appreciate it. I mean, I don't think um, this cotton works very well with outdoors. More of a wool blend would be much better. I mean, what? How does this hold up in the rain? He just starts staring off in the distance. <laughs> you were so excited about this group yesterday. I don't understand why why you've lost all your excitement. I forgot I have to talk to you all. <laughs> I have to talk to you people sober. <laughs> is 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 there putting it on at all? Yeah, he's he's got it on and he's trying some some kicks and stuff, seeing how it feels. Oh my gosh. Zerp has put some clothes on. <laughs> it's a miracle. Zerp, it's like it um it breathe it, it feels like it it's like heavy enough to stay in place, but it moves with you very easily. It's not restricting at all, huh? No, not at all. It's like fanta it's like seems to be built for motion. And you're kicking and jumping and um and you notice yours has um like basically like a hood over your wing. So if you retracted your wings, they would be underneath something, but a lighter piece of fabric for your wings to stick out of. And you can easily fly, and it kind of falls up on your shoulder. Oh, nice. And of course, that's reversible too. So you can... But Comac says, you can play with that later. You'll get... You need to be have the utmost secrecy when you're doing work for the Grey Cloak Society. The things we do need to not always reach the eyes and the ears of the public. But most of the time, walk around as guards of Neverwinter, hidden in your purpose. Turn them back to the blue side out. You need to blend in, especially the five of you. Look at this big tree man over here and the little naked. You need something to blend in in the Clever. That's clever. I like that. I like how the cloak matches my skin color. Yeah, I noticed that. I thought you'd, uh, monochromatic seemed to be your thing. All right. Um, uh, wait, what do I have to do next? Tupian? What do we do? What's the next? Goes, I think we're showing them to their room. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do you want to see the new place we got for you? Oh, yes. All right. All right. And he's packing a pipe. And he starts, all right, let's get off of this stupid roof. Ceremony's you know, over. I was up here just last night. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. Don't do that. You'll fall off. Is he sleepwalk? No. Please, please don't die. I had that tailored. It was very expensive. <laughs> all right, let's go. Um, and they're walking through the city. Um. As you walk, as you guys walk out the main streets, you um, uh, Tuvian kind of starts to hang back, looking like he's going to talk to a guard, but 
uh, Rasheel, he gives you a look. And he start, and then he like falls beside you. And starts yeah, walking he... starts walking slower beside you as the group's mostly ahead. And the streets are pretty busy. There's a lot of people following cold. You have a good night last night. Oh yes, it was fine. Now, were you in t- too intoxicated to know the meaning and purpose behind showing you the letter? Or do I need to repeat it and spell it out for you? No, I understand. I I just um I wanted to have a little bit of a more clear head before I discuss with my brother. I just wanted you to know anything you write back, give it to me. I've business yes. in Neverwinter in a couple of days. Start of next week, I'll be down there. I can deliver it directly to the council for you, whatever you need to course. We can't trust that sort of course to, in, in any way, except I don't want you putting it through the post. Um, yeah, so about that, I, what are we to do with my identity here? Well, I was hoping you wouldn't you'd be intelligent enough not to give your name out. Does anyone here besides this group know your name? Uh, yeah, yes, probably. Who is I mean, this? I've, I've, been, I've been here before. I, I have I have connections here. This is not my first time in Neverwinter. I, I can't I can't assume that no one knows me here. Yes, would you be surprised if you stay in polite society, the people you will run into? We might have to give you some. We might have to give you something to disguise yourself. In the meantime, yes. I would start to go by an alias. Get all of your friends here in, in our little on the same page. Yes. Okay. That's that's good. Th- yes. Thank you. You haven't told your brother, have you? Uh, not yet. His voice got a little darker. Not yet. What is that supposed to? Be? I, I, I mean, we woke up and we we had to climb to the roof to do this stupid ceremony. It's. I don't mean about the letter. I mean about our. Oh, if, what conversation are you talking about? I don't know. Just what? You, what do you mean? I... Good boy. He starts walking faster and catches up with Amos. And you guys um, turn the corner, and guess where you end up? You turn the corner, and once again, Komok is walking straight towards Fate's Fool. And you see that um, nice-looking building. Needs probably needs a paint job. Um, kind of painted like a wooden building stained in a... Uh, like a very dark stain, a very dark brown. Three-story building... Um, all, you can't really see into the windows on the lower levels, um, but you he starts walking toward the building, but instead of going to the front door, he goes around back and enters in through the back door. As he enters in through the back door, um, there's two halflings in there laughing, and they're sitting on some stools, and Cole Mucka says, all right, come on, come on in, come on in. And he ushers you into a back door. You, went, you just went through an alleyway behind the building, into the kitchen and this the sinks are there and mops and things all right wait right here i'll go get her who he's already gone that's probably enid he comes back around the corner with one of the uh two humans that make up the three ladies all right let's get this over with follow me this is why you'll be living now. That means I'm your land lady. Understand? She turns around and looks at you all. Sure. That means no funny business. And she turns a corner and there's a staircase and she starts going up. And she's talking. No funny business. The rent might be taken care of. Doesn't mean I can't charge you for things when you break my building. Do you understand? Yes, of course we understand. She's just hollering Mm. off problems 
I'm, j I'm just saying, no parties, no women, no staying up past midnight, no coming and taking food from my kitchen. If you come down to the inn, you're st you are still, you you are still a patron there. Buy your own food. And she keeps going up, and you go up three sets of stairs, and then you get to the top. You turn the corner to the top set of stairs, and it just the stairs go like into the ceiling, and there's like a hatch door. All right, pass these among you. And she has a chain, and it has uh, these little silver keys on them. One for each of the five of you. Keep this locked at all times. Don't lose your key. I'm not replacing. And she opens. She has another key, and she opens a uh, like a um, looks like a padlock actually, and then it opens this big hatch door, and she can walk up, and you all follow her into a small room, pretty dark, and she uh has a candle in her hands, and she lights it. She lights it right there with a little a little match. And she's standing in a small room. It's dark in the interior, up in the top of the building. And she opens, you see in front of you, there's a huge, a big door. And she uh, uses the same key and opens that door. And sunlight comes flooding in. And you see a common room. And you follow her into a very large sunlit common room. The first thing you see as you walk through the is not just, basically it's a five-sided room and two sides of the room, two sides of the Pentagon are nothing but windows, paid large panels of glass. But when they reach the ceiling, the ceiling in that part of the common room is also glass all the way up. And some of the, on this nice warm day, some of the skylights above in the common room are tilted open and there's a breeze moving through. You can hear the city down in the rest of the common room, there's a gigantic hearth and uh, seven. Uh, there's a, a big sofa and five big chairs, so spots for seven people to sit. And some firewoods already sitting there, but not, probably not enough. You see, on one side of the room, there's like a small kitchen with a little counter and a, uh, a a small a small wood stove and a kettle. And you see a little water closet sign next to that of a, a little water closet. Um, and you see on one side. Near, near the windows, there's one door, and on the other side of the room, closer to the water closet and the kitchen, there are two sets. There's five beds. I'm sorry, there's six beds, and five of you fight over it as you please. If you break these windows, I'm kicking you out. Is the six beds for you, Enid? If you get close to me while I'm sleeping, I'll kill you. I believe no, so. I don't sleep in here. This is your apartment. I'm your landlady. Not your lady of the night. I don't I tuck you in. I don't tuck you in. I don't do the cleaning. You turn it into a pigsty, I'll burn it down. I'll burn it down. Do you hear me? I don't put up with your mess. Call Mark and these idiots going to be trouble for me? And he just leans in and goes, Now, eat it. Why can't you be sweet to them like you are to the rest of us? You know they're going to be good patrons. I can for them, right? It's like, I've seen them enough times not to like. And how do you know I'm Enid? I might be Ruby. You can't tell the difference. He goes, I know Enid when I see her. Okay, you got me. I'm Enid. Make yourselves at home and come back. I'll um, see you in my office. How about tomorrow morning? How does that sound? First thing, take the day off. Do whatever you need. I have an assignment for you. Sounds great. Yeah. And Enid turns back around and says, I lied, I'm Ruby. And she shuts the door <laughs> and leaves, leaves, you alone in, leaves you alone in the room. I like Ruby. What? You guys, let me tell you more about this. It's a really nice wood floor. It has a really big red and green that stretches over a lot of the common room. And underneath, there's there's like basically benches built into the wall underneath the two walls that are all windows. There's big benches where you could like sit in that part of the room. But that part of the room is relatively across from it is the, uh, you, have, you have like the side that has the kitchen and the hall. 
Um, and there are, remember, one bedroom on the right, closer to the hearth, and two bedrooms closer to the water closet. Uh, so five bed, five bedrooms. So there's three bedrooms. Bed. She, she said okay. six beds, three bedrooms. Got it. Okay. Uh, I will go into the room by the hearth. You said. Uh huh. Cool. You open that room and it's rather spacious. And there's a uh, there are two windows. It's it's spacious, but it's it's like kind of an elongated rectangle of a room. Has a closet, um, has a chest next to, two, and there's two beds kind of uh, diagonally in the room away from each other. And they're both like, they're bigger than like a single bed or a cot. They're a little bit wider, both of them. Um, the sheets look clean, but pretty simple. I'll take this one. Alistair will follow him in. All right. Oh, there. That's what you. Iguan's gonna look for one of the bigger rooms and take that one. If there's a bigger one, if not, he'll take whichever one's closest to the trap door. If the same distance, then I'll take the one on the left. Okay. Yeah. The other. So the other two bedrooms are on the opposite side of the common room, and there's the door on the left, right next to the water closet door, and then there's the door on the right, closer to the. I'm, I'm making a illustration of this to show you guys in more detail. I'll take the room on the left. Okay, you open that door, and that room's near the more the interior of the building, and um, there's no windows in there. It's pretty tight. There's a, a a smaller chest, and there are bunk beds that neither bunk would suit you very well. He closes the door and goes to the other room. The other room is a little bit bigger, but still the same size bunk beds, and that room does have a window. He just lies the bunk bed down on the ground, like the bed's sideways, and then tries to lay out the cushions to make it like a double-sized bed that would actually fit him. Well, the the bunk beds don't come apart, like, uh, I obviously. I mean, it is they're, they are just made of wood. Any bunk beds can come apart if you try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are I don't, meant. I don't they want weren't to build. Them. Day one, we break something. All right. <laughs> yeah, day one, Igwan breaks something. Alathar steps back out. Um, uh, so Rashir likes this one. Um, I'll take this uh, one. No, oh, okay. Um, it has a window. Always and uh, Zerp. Um, also, if anyone needs an extra bed, I can't fit on this one very well. Is uh, do you want to come, come check out the beds in here? I don't know if they're different, but uh... sure. And Igwan comes over to check them out. This is my bed right here. Okay. What other beds are in here? Uh, what other beds are there? We have two oh. beds in our room. Yeah, in the room, in, on the right side of the common room, there are two, like, almost, like, two double beds. Mm. And then on the opposite side of the common room, there's two bedrooms, and each of those bedrooms have bunk beds. Alathar, if you want this bunk bed, I can trade it for that bed there. You can gonna move them, or...? I mean, I can go over there. That's fine. And, I mean, uh, Rashir, are you are you okay with uh, Eguan being in here? I could move the beds, probably. You go where you want to go, Alatha. I don't care. I just want this bed. I want this bed because it fits me. Right, that makes sense. I, I, I can go over there, and you can share a room with uh, Rafil. All right. Sorry. Just keep an eye on him. I will. So yeah. you two are going... So Rafil and Iguam are going in the room with the two big beds? Mm-hmm. 
All right, Zerp, what are you doing? Um, you know, I want to just kind of claim this little spot right here, and he uh, starts setting up some bedding in front of the hearth, just like grab uh-huh. some of the blankets. Yeah. You don't want one of the beds? Mm, not really, no. In your own room, or sharing a room with this someone? This is the biggest room here. That's, that's true. <laughs> All right. Got so windows. Point. I, I'll take one of the rooms with the bunk beds then. I'll take the other one. That works just fine. That's great. I think we all have an arrangement. All right. Do you guys want to explore a little bit in your living space? I have to poop. No, or she'll. This is this is just a trick, isn't it? You don't actually have to. You, you want to find out? Say this, and then you come back with a smile on your face, meaning you did something wrong. You but think what? I'm going to steal something from the the bathroom that's right there? <laughs> I don't know. You always manage to steal something from a bathroom. Oh, Sounds speaking of the bathroom, I took the the uh, the bedroom that's not near the bathroom. <laughs> I don't want to be that close to the water closet. You get that one always. Oh, oh wait, you're stuck with the room with no windows, and it's next to the bathroom. But at your age, maybe that's a good idea. You boy, better uh, better hold your poop until I'm asleep. <laughs> No promises. Um, Rashia, when when you have a moment, could you come over and speak with me? Yes. Yeah. Let me let me finish pooping. No, no worries. Do do what you need to do. I'll take wait- approximately half an hour and uh, <laughs> read through <laughs> read through the papers that I stole from uh, Colmock. I wish there were stall doors. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to go as well? Oh no, I I just wish I couldn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is like a it is like a I call it a water closet, meaning it's like a really rudimentary bathroom. <laughs> but, but it has like a very simplified version of indoor plumbing. So it's very sanitary. Like it's not like there isn't like there's that. So you know I forgot to mention there is on one wall like a water basin to like wash your hands out in the common room. So there isn't like a, a vanity and a mirror in the water closet. It's literally just. But like the door closes. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm not making you live like 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 Zerp. I know not all of you are into that. <laughs> no offense, Zerp. We gotta get um, Zerp a litter box. <laughs> <laughs> this whole room That's is the terrible. litter box. I hate... <laughs> I hate that so much. I hate it so much. Don't. Don't do it. See that nice window? Forever Floor to ceiling it. windows? Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. You're gonna be I like a. Have you're gonna be like a. Of just a it on the litter box now. You'll be like a prisoner scraping the walls with his own feces pretty soon. <laughs> you guys are gonna regret this. Um. So while you're in the bathroom for half an hour, you uh pull up the papers. It's like a big crumpled up bunch of papers, and there's almost no writing on them at all. They're all drawings. Hmm. Of what? Um. It looks like views out of a window of a busy city street, like scape, and then often birds on a balcony. But like, almost like as if you're sitting on the balcony and a bird comes up to you. It's a sketch of the bird from your point. Hmm. Okay. That's all they are. Okay. All right. 
I will keep them and I will finish up and I will wash my hands this time. <laughs> character and... development. Everyone, everyone, that was character development. Did you hear that? I think his alignment just shifted. Yes. <laughs> I just don't want pink eye, so. Uh, I'll go over to Alathar's room. The door is closed. Knock on the door. Uh, you just hear him go, oh, one moment. And uh, oh, run over to the door and pull it open. Oh, oh, hi, brother. Uh, co come in. Close the door behind you. Oh, okay. <laughs> do that. Um, so I... I wanted to talk to you about something that happened to me last night. Is it one of those dreams? Well, one of one of you know one of my visions. Well, oh, oh, more more than a vision. You see, uh, you see, remember what I showed you the other day? Well, actually, a couple months ago, honestly. The mole on your butt. No, no, no. I, I, no, I never showed you a mole on my butt. What? No, the the, the thing that the sword hilt. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Well, check what happened with it now, and, and just push aside. I had like hastily, Elthar had hastily put the sword underneath the covers of his of his uh, of the bottom bunk, and I just kind of push it aside and pull out the sword. Uh, so, um, yeah, so this happened last night. You might have saw it, saw it earlier. No, it's not. This you is that hilt. You took it to a blacksmith? What happened? No, not exactly. Um, like I said, I had a vision and, uh, ended up in the lake and, uh, some lady gave me this, made me, give me this sword and, said that I was special and I would be uh, great and uh, this was my sword and someday I would be great and I'm balanced and uh, yeah. This woman do anything to make give you the uh, feeling? The what? <laughs> um, no, never mind. No, I mean everything seemed on the up and up, I guess. I mean, this, these kind of things happen to me. You know, the gods, they speak with me. She might have been a goddess. I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think she might have been. I can't quite figure that one out yet, and it will take some study. But anyways, I think this... And he's just kind of like is twirling it, moving it around. This is... Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, just put it down. Just put it down. Put it down. Uh, right. Um... I think this is my new calling. Uh, going to going to be a a fighter or something. Ooh, ah, oh, buddy. What? I don't. I don't know that. Um, I mean, good. Good for you getting a, a sword. But it's, it's quite a fancy sword, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you've embraced magic, and I shall embrace uh, the sword. I wouldn't go so far as to say I've embraced magic, but back back to the sword. I. So you had another dream, but it yes. wasn't. It was more than just a dream. You woke well, up and you were in a lake, and yes. This, I, did the goddess take the hilt from you and then give it back to you as a sword, or? Well, no, it was more like I was walking on the water, which was kind of black and tarry and oily, and I was walking upon it, and she told me to shove it in there, and once I did, I came out, and uh, she forged it in fire or something, and uh, voila, sword. Might even be magic. I don't really know yet. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but uh, I can't really hide it anymore because... Uh, a sword, and no one's seen me carry a sword before, but I thought I'd tell you first because you're my brother, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, do some more research into that. Well, I, of course, I, I, I intend to spend some time with it today and try and consider it, figure out what's going on with it all and all, but 
I think. Did it... What? Where was this lake? Oh, funny thing. Yeah, it actually was in Neverwinter. Um, I actually woke up in a lake in the middle of the night and had to swim back. Yeah, that's twice now that I've woken up in some place that isn't quite where I thought it was. Do you remember a couple months ago I woke up in the graveyard where I found this? And yeah. Yes, um, I, I think I think it best that we don't share this with with the others yet until we can find out more about the sword. Yeah, that might be wise. That's As very... you guys are having that conversation, you hear even through that bedroom door, you hear a a very rather loud knock, like a stick hitting your front door. We should go see what that is. Everybody hears it. Zerp, Hello? you're probably closest to the door. What? Start heading to the door. The post arrived! There's a thing! Okay, I open the door. Um, I'm just kidding. Colmok just forgot something. Apparently I'm now a parcel, sir. There's a message here for a... Is one of you actually named Zerp? That's me. Oh. I see. It track. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like any self-respecting landlady, I already opened it and read your message. <laughs> Do you want to tell me what it says? Someone named the Master Faradir requests your presence for tea. Hmm. And we're going to stop right there tonight. Guess who has a date? <laughs> oh, moving in on, moving in on Rochelle's territory. Then. Yeah, our boy Zerp. <laughs> that was a good hey. session, though. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, sorry. I, that was that was I've been dying to hey. know for two months now what the stats are for these cloaks. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? I cloak the world's ability. We'll never know. You will find out. <laughs> I, I, I had a, I had a, I'm sorry, I'm just being indecisive. I had a version, and I decided to scrap it. Mm. I think I'm making it too complicated. Anyway. Well, I have to make Igwam so with the right cloak. You have to wait even longer, Eric, because mm -hmm. uh, I have an idea. I want to, I just want to feel certain about the idea of what that, because okay. it's your emblem. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks for pivoting and making this happen. Yeah, Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing on roll twenty, but this, this was very fun. fun. It's worked out great. It was fun. Yep. Yeah, a little, little bit of action, a little bit of RPG. That's right. That's right, boy. Yep. I got my sword. Well, um, <laughs> I'm still good for the twenty first this month. If you guys are, yeah, should be good. Hopefully, we'll be. All good in person. Yeah. It'd be wonderful. It'd be wonderful. Yep. Are you, Jeff? I forget what you said at the beginning of the session. Everybody's pretty much feeling better at your end. Yeah, I'm starting to come back. Mm. What'd you say, Noah? I said, I'm the one who's feeling better. Everyone else is getting into it. Oh, no. We're getting out of it. Wow. Sounds like it wasn't terrible, terrible. No. Just Good. Well, I'm tired. I need to get some sleep because mm -hmm. I'm getting up at a semi-decent hour tomorrow. Oh, you guys yeah. are great. Have a great night's sleep. Um, I will plan on hanging out with all you on the 21st. Cool. Thanks, Bryce. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.